Welcome to episode 30 of the Movie Lighthouse, our Valentine's special no less, shining a light through the fog of the emotional vulnerability of love and film. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> My name's Wyndham and today I will be playing the part of James. <laughs> yes, you will. I'm Laurie, I'm going to play Laurie today if that's alright with you guys. Um, and I'm going to be playing the part of Laurie as well. Excellent. Nice. Oh my god, there's no hope for this show. It's really, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about it. How are we all? Yeah, very well. Very excited about this show. Mm-hmm. Peachy, well, very happy let's to be keep back. keep that firmly in check. Firstly, some apologies to our listeners. I did actually get a note from somebody asking, is everything all right? You seem to be a bit delayed. I said, yeah, yeah, we are, but that's because life gets in the way. Yeah, sometimes. I should say the front of that because I have to cancel the No, I think we all have. And the other slice of cancel. I had a hangover. Yeah, so get um, over it, listen. Yeah, man. However, we, we do all know say that, that waiting for stuff is good. We do say that though, but we've managed to just catch February, so we're still we in February. Exactly. It's only two weeks, so yeah. we're all right. So yeah. technically, thank God for the leap year. Exactly. <laughs> or else it wouldn't be oh, yeah. February. Yeah, if anyone wants to propose, now's the time to do it. 29th of February, guys. Boom. Nice. But, um, so we are technically two weeks late. We had originally decided we were going to record this the day after <laughs> Valentine's Day, yeah. which was also the day before the Oscars. So this was going to be a bit of a Valentine's Oscar-y show. Gosh. I'm loathe to waste any effort, especially my own, so we're still just going to do that show. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I'll so check as it. if we're two weeks before, the last two weeks haven't happened... Oh, well, I'm going to give my nominations. I think Parasite's going to do pretty well. Do you think? think? Yeah. Well, let's get let's let's roll it on to the news. Hi, hon. How's it going? Anybody got any news? Ah, any predictions about the uh, the Oscars, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> so I on, didn't pay any attention. Did you not? No. So I. I was just going to raise Parasite because you banged on about it for yeah, and I haven't and seen haven't it. Seen it. Whereas we went yeah, to see it. Typical. This is typical Laurie, is it? It really he is. He goes on about this brilliant, brilliant new film. We go to the effort of sorting it out, and then you don't even bother coming. Yeah, I know. It was. But a... I look at the lighthouse there. How tidy it is. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. I put it was effort a, in. But it was a, a brilliant, brilliant film, and obviously we it won four Oscars. Yeah, four. For, can you remember what four? I can, if you just let me check my memory slightly. Uh, it won Best Director for Bong Joon-ho. That's yeah. it. It won Best Film. It won a Best Original Screenplay. And it won Best Foreign Language Film. Oh, well and, done, And he's Bong great Joon-ho. because he goes around with his interpreter, doesn't he? He's become a bit of a celebrity in their own right. But also he can speak English perfectly well. He just prefers to communicate with his own language. So a bit of a gauze as well. Do you think it's do you think it's a test for her? So he's actually saying, "Oh, I fucking hate being here. <laughs> These press junkets are shit." And she goes, "Well, he's really happy to be here because uh, let's face it, we don't speak South Korean, do we? No, not well, not not well. Yeah. 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 Just just while we're talking about Parasite, I've just got a little bit of a complaint to make to the View Cinema, mm. who ruined our experience. If, oh, God, it, yeah. If you want to check out our review, it is up, yeah. uploaded. A yeah, short review of Parasite. Listen to his complaint on that. Oh yeah, do I talk about it on You that? do talk about oh, it. Oh right, right. I won't it shocking. About that. But you know, if you work in a cinema, maybe the first the thing that you really need to make sure is that it's <laughs> you the have filled the film. in focus. What and you, you have, have the film. bloody <laughs> film. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Especially when you're trying to coincide and throw to a live Q and A somewhere else. Yeah. It kind of fucks that. And that I will and, and then my drama continued because Croydon I parked Ugh. in the cinema uh, in the car park in Croydon, um, only to find that they shut the whole shopping centre, so I couldn't get my car. So did you not get your car? Yes, then? I did. Uh, I had to get in. I had to let the security let me in. Then we were wandering around uh, like Dawn of the Dead in an. Oh, it's in, central, isn't it? Yeah, in, in it was really weird. And then yeah, finally got my car out. But yeah, the whole thing was a bit of a nightmare. I really like Croydon. It still surprises me why no comic superhero has been written about you know set in Croydon because the skyline it's perfect it's screaming for a superhero well, so anyone you listening should, you, should, any, you should crack on yeah oh shit <laughs> I'll get on with it any other news um I saw it's kind of just popped out of nowhere for me but then I, was, I should be shining that light a little bit more often but uh Tenet Christopher Nolan's new film Ten, right. Tenet 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 Anyway, 
Uh, Christopher Nolan's new film looks like it's timey wimey kind of time travel, international espionage. Some kids trying to stop World War Three. It's got David Patterson for Robert, facing Robert Patterson. Robert Patterson and some other dude. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Debicki. Debicki. Aaron um, Tyler Johnson. Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. All them like Michael Caine. Obviously, Obviously Michael Caine. That. So that looks kind of cool. Oh. It's a tenet. Keep your eye out for that. I think that's coming. Might be summertime. I think so. Well, in my news, I'd, I'd be really sneaky. I've tried to squeeze in 1917, I think. Just, just out, can everybody hear the rustle of James's script? Yeah. It's oh, is there. this how you manage your... Not just when you're running the show, but when you're... <laughs> That's the fourth lighthouse, sir. Yeah. I'm going to make it very quiet now. No, it's all right. Um, I was just going to talk about the, the way they did, the, you know, the, the, the fact that... Has anyone seen 1917 yeah, shot seen in it. how many Well, takes? they say it's one, two long takes, but, it, uh, but then they say it's not, they trick it. That's yeah, a lie. But I just thought, hmm. is it right? Is it just contrivance? It's, it's, uh, what's interesting is because it's, it's kind of connected to what real life is, isn't it? It's a constant experience of the present. So you're experiencing a constant experience oh. of the present, oh, okay. which is good. Or Obviously, the past, Hitchcock... it's 1917. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that present. Um, but Hitchcock did it with rope. <laughs> we're just trying it? to work out whether I'm just trying to say this. I want to. I want to know. I'm trying to figure out whether I want to challenge that. But carry on. <laughs> I'll challenge it. Please. What have I said? No, no, no. Just that constant experience of the present. Oh look, for fucks. Right. Anyway, but yeah, uh, was it Hitchcock did it with rope, didn't he? But that officially was, I think, two or three takes. But that's a, that's a great film. And then uh, the uh, um, Steve the, Pemberton. Yeah, uh, they did it in. Um, uh, Psychoville for that Psychoville thing. they did the same but, thing one shot amazing great yeah. I love it what they do and obviously one cut of the dead that whole yeah. bit there so it's, it's cool oh, absolutely yeah is the film any good though 1917 well it was okay well no, no right <laughs> what bothered me they made a huge point that, that the premise is that the, these two people two soldiers have to get over into enemy lines and go um, warm this battalion before they all get killed yet they get over enemy lines and then there's a whole bloody battalion of our guys that just turn up so it's so all that effort yeah you kind of think well why didn't they just tell them I don't know I don't know what communication was like back in the day not great Benny not great right. no. yeah it was alright okay <laughs> De- but Denny... what I did find that, um, discover is there's very few films made about the first world war apparently there are yeah there's yeah. Journey's End which uh, has been made a couple of times I've never seen that yeah, no. I've read the play. Did it start as a play or a book? Yeah, or a film? as a play. Mm. Is Stanley Kubrick's um, Paths of Glory? I think that may be the First World War. That's oh. Kurt Douglas. We lost. We finally lost. Which, uh, it sounds like we were waiting for that, <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs> what? We finally, finally lost him. But it's like for years, for the past twenty He's years, I've been, I've been having moments. So like, I might be eating cherry pie or something. Think. Jesus, he got Kurt is still with us. Has he got anything to do with cherry pie? I think uh, he's been no. Been he might have done, actually. <laughs> but yeah, bless Kurt. So, he's definitely well, come on, what good... films has he on besides Spartacus? <laughs> uh, Spartacus, great film. Uh, one, one Cup in the Hole, One in the one cup. cup. One Cup in the it's Hole. It's a really good film. I can't, one that doesn't in, sound like it's a Billy Wilder film. Two girls in a cup. <laughs> really good. Wasn't it that, was he? Uh, is in a good kind of weird uh, sort of um, horror telekinetic film called Oh God, The Fear, I believe it's called. It's got John Cassavetti in it as well. As, oh. But anyway, yes. Spartacus, Ace in the Hole, Lust Ace Alive, in the Hole, Vikings, Vikings Illusion, It Runs in the Family, Touched by an Angel, Bar Mitzvah, Diamonds, The Simpsons. They, he's been in a lot. He's been in Yeah. So he had. Vikings is a really good one. Uh, 95 acting credits. Yeah. Oh, do well do. done, Kurt, man. Powerhouse. Finally. Lost him. Finally, Finally lost, him. lost him. We're going to get uh, Denny Villeneuve, the guy who did uh, The Arrival, did Blade Runner like 2049. Arrival. Yeah, yeah, I liked Arrival a lot. Um, so he's working on June. Um, oh. And it's looking like it's probably going to be pretty nifty. And we're going to get that in December. So Is this a quite an exciting film or a It's a film... Part? Yeah, I think it's a film. Uh, I so we're going to have Dune. Would you say Dune? Yeah, yeah. it's a mini series, is it? No. Is it? A film? Tell me, it's not a mini series. I think it's a film. Is it? Yeah, I think so. It's coming out in December. I, I hope I'm not wrong. 
I thought it was a mini series. Oh, damn it. All right, then, we'll leave that one on ice. Pretend you didn't hear that. Well, it's all right. Talk about it. Yeah. Oh, and I got it wrong last time when I said that the... Uh... It was sport. <laughs> 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 the Benioff and Weiss, the uh, Game of Thrones writers, they're doing Lovecraft. It's actually going to be a trilogy that's just all theirs. It's not linked to Nicolas Cage's film that's recently come out, The Colour Out of Space. It's not linked to that, albeit that Colour Out of Space is also an H.P. Lovecraft working. Oh, so yeah, just tidy that up. Just tidy that up. <laughs> Marvellous. Sweet that for that. Only other thing I have yeah. is, did you guys see the Candyman trailer? <gasps> I yeah. did see it. What did you think? So this is a, 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 a kind of an homage sequel type thing, hold on, there is a specific wording about it, a spiritual sequel to the 1992 original. Yeah. It's written and produced by Jordan Peele. Who... He, so he did Us. He did Us and Get Oh, out. right. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and directed by Nia DaCosta. What did you think of the trailer? Right, well, I liked the trailer very much. It, um, yeah, there was lots of similarities uh, to the 92 version. And you love. Which I love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's obviously, as we know, it's very different to... The, so it's not going from the original short story, which no. is set in Liverpool, all that kind of stuff, which is fine by me. It'll be interesting to see if they keep the social connotation, That's which is the thing that I really like. But the, um, I, I, I heard the name check of Cabrini Green, which was nice. Yeah. So I've got high hopes for it. It looks... Looks good. It looks quite violent. Looks yeah. more violent than the original, but I guess that's the kind of progression we're on. Yeah. Mm. But I'm although, not feeling it. No. No. Well, it's because not... the, the original is is it's like you say the whole sort of social commentary and it's a nasty, nasty film and the pain and stuff that was put into that film and literally like the actors were put through freaking hell. Um, and this, you know, like from the opening scene, you see five or six girls all lined up. At high school or whatever, looking into the mirror saying, Candy Man, Candy And I'm like, mm, nah. But I think if we looked, if you look at the trailer for the original, I think the focus would have been on the Candy Man, Candy Man, Candy Man bit. Whereas actually that wasn't really part, you know, a massive part of it at all. But I don't know, yeah. we'll have to wait and see. But we will see. I, I'm quite From excited. the trailer, he appears to be in it more than, it, than yeah. he was in the original. But mm. Tony Todd is listed as a member member of the cast even though in the trailer you, I didn't get his voice for Candyman you don't see the Candyman at all do you no you, you don't yeah, you do get his so. voice mm. and I couldn't immediately place it as Tony okay. Todd he's but. probably got a cameo as you know someone from Cabrini Green or something mm. yeah. Yeah. we'll see we'll see uh. but we're going to watch it though right Hell yeah, yeah. Cool. We'll we'll do a trip and Laurie won't come. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah he, he doesn't want to come to this one. We should that make him. Go to this one. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see actually. Wes Craven's got a new one coming out called The French Dispatch, which is apparently it's a. I lo- thought Wes Craven was dead. Not Wes Craven. Wes Anderson. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did I say Craven? Yeah. You Damn I think it. You're thinking a swamp thing, aren't you? Or news round. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, The French Dispatch. Wes Anderson, new film. He's kind of got the. Usual cast, as it were. We've got um, the one Bill Murray, the Owen Wilson. He did, yeah, he did he the did Fantastic that. Mr. Fox, and, and he that, did um, Island of Dogs. A Mona Lisa. How do I talk about that? One? You so always do stuff. that. I haven't. I don't know that one. Okay, I don't think it is him. Royal Tenenbaums, yeah. Life Aquatic, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Always yeah, unique, yeah, beautiful, those, yeah. uh, obsessive. Like the detail of his films are just. I. I think he's fantastic. So what's this film about? The French Dispatch is kind of a love letter to journalism set in fictional 1920th century France. No, it was definitely a real place. No, no, the world, the universe is is quite fictional. I think you might have flying pigs and shit like that. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be really good. Well, of course it's going to be good. Uh, That's in June. We've got that. So a bit of time, but it's just exciting to see that that's coming out. Nice. Lovely. Mm, Anything else? Doc? In that case, we should move on to mailbag. Anybody had any mail? Oh, mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Shall I write it on the I bag? I'm going to so. write it on the bag I've, now. I've got a couple, actually. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, First one is, um, hi, Lighthouse crew. Can you open the window? It's blowing a bloody gale out here. It is. That's Can you from, hear it? That's from it's, Alan. That's the same here. Why well, do we need to open the window? It's by the gale. Surely we should keep it shut. Oh, no. Alan's outside. He wants oh, well, to come oh right. Okay. Uh, and the second one is anonymous. Mm. Oh, Ooh, how? Worry. And it just says, "Enough of the aimless chat and films. I want to know when the next quiz will be." 
Well. Oh. 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 It couldn't possibly be a movie lighthouse special without a quiz. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. So, four rounds to this quiz. Mm. First round, because it's Valentine's. Yeah. Love is in the air. Oh. Love is in the yeah. air. <laughs> you complete me, Jerry Maguire. I've crossed oceans of time to find you. Bram Stoker's drive. So it's a quiz started. What no. do we have to do? This, this, is, the, Just this listen. is the intro. Right. I wanted it to be you. I wanted it to be you so badly. You've got mail. I wish I knew how to quit you, broke back mountain. I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> as a tale of passion. Yeah. <laughs> what, right? What a the, bit Spanish. the love stories in our favourite films bring us jeopardy, peril, sacrifice and joy. But can use twos identify the film and the love story arc from these quotes. Oh. Right. Can you? So There's not film? 15 questions, are there? It's not. There's three questions in each round. Yes. So, sorry, we have to identify the film and the love arc story arc? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right. It will make sense once I give you the answers to the first question. All right, okay. okay. So, James, you go first. Yep. The quote is, get away from her, you bitch. Okay. So, that is Ripley in Aliens... Correct, for one point, Aliens. Um, and the love story arc is... Uh, oh, Lord. What, in Aliens? Yeah. It's easy. Well, Just pick why a love is she story in Aliens. That? Okay, well, it will be her and the guy that she puts to sleep who she likes. Oh, no. What, the Hicks? cat. The cat. No. It's, it's, it's her love for Newt, isn't it? Ripley and Newt. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the not... story. Well, or, I thought we were talking Valentine's love. Or I would also have accepted the face hugger in the jar and Burke. <laughs> <laughs> or Vasquez and Drake. Yay, <laughs> Vasquez. So, I was looking at her gun yesterday. One point. <sighs> one point to me each. Oh, you, what? Oh, Laurie thanks, stole, man. Laurie stole oh. That's how it's going. That's how it's going. Okay. okay. All right. I'm ready for my question. Laurie. Yeah. Your quote is, mm. start the reactor. Oh, do you know it? Oh, <laughs> the reactor! Oh, for God's sakes! Oh no! Oh damn it! No, James, you want to steal the film? When the wind blows? <laughs> <laughs> no. Star- so it is the Star Trek, the original Total Recall. Oh! oh! Love story arc. Oh, can't I steal that? Oh, go on then. I don't know anyway. So it's him and the brunette, because you think it's it's him and Melina, uh, kick ass, but it's not her. It's the brunette. It is. It is him and Melina. Yeah, I, I would. Not the also, little guy. Start the reactor. That's the one who says start the reactor. Yeah. How oh, is it? Start yeah. the reactor. I would also have accepted Hauser and Cohagen. Oh right, yeah. Or oh, yeah, us generally, and honorary lighthouse keeper Michael Ironside. They're right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so second question for you, James. Yeah. I feel the need, the need for speed. Oh, man. Oh, flip you, it Yours are much easier, though. I can't... Are I, you fucking serious? No, I can't think of it. I feel the need, the need for speed. I can't think of it. Not like the amphetamine. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I want to say something like Batman. I can't remember. Top to gun, steal. for God's sake. Oh, well, Laurie I've only steal. not really seen that. It comes I? with a handshake. Well, well, seen it was. Love it story arc? Okay. Um, him in the bathroom with any of the other guys. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Go for that, shower it's, scene. It's not what I have, but I'm, I hadn't thought about that. I would have accepted Maverick and Goose. Yeah. Um, I would also have accepted Val Kilmer and his own reflection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And obviously... And us generally, and honorary light housekeeper Michael Ironside. <laughs> yeah. Can I just ask, has anyone seen Maverick? Is it, or has it come out yet? It's in the trailer. It's not out yet, is it? No, it's not out yet. Okay. Cool. Second question. Yeah, go on. Laurie. Ugh. And I thought these smelled bad on the outside. Oh, yeah. So that's Han Solo slicing open the Tauntaun. What's the film? To put Luke in, side of it, in The Empire Strikes Back. Yep. Yeah. And ah. the love arc is... I'm, not, I'm going to try and pick a good one and wonder if you've got it. Uh, oh, balls. Uh, Han and Leia. 
Oh, there you go. Sorry, no. I'm sorry. Oh, you can't have the point for that. Too... It's Han and Chewy. Han and yeah. Chewy? Or... Or C3PO and R2-D2. Could have had that. Or... Do I get a point? Yoda and the Pepperami? Yeah. Yes! Yoda and the Pepperami. <laughs> or, I also had Laurie and the merest whiff of anything Star Wars. Yeah, well, yeah. there's that too. There's that too. Okay, so... so... The, 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 actually, yes. Cool. Uh, like the High thing. Republic. The High Republic is going to be apparently where Star Wars are going now. After this Luke, the Skywalker stuff, the High Republic, really old, way, way, way back. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Carry on. Final question in this round. Sorry, Laurie was just answering a question that we talked about about 40 minutes ago. I just skim over this, whereas you have to, you, you're used to trying to make context of this stuff. I just don't bother. Right, final question in this round. Yep. James. Yes. We have such sights to show. Ah, well, that is Hellraiser. It is. And I am going to say that uh, Uncle Frank, um, uh, Brother Frank, and the box. Oh! Not what I had, but I'm going to give you that. I had Julia and Frank as yeah. the barn door one. Oh, yeah. That's... But I would also have accepted the homeless demon dude and live cricket. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, final question. I think you have got the tougher end of the stick on this round. Okay. Is that? Good. Kill your brother. You'll feel better. Oh, ah, bleh. Has he got my Kawhi inside of it? Uh, no, this one doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. And kill we him. haven't kill reviewed it, brother. But it would fit in our remit. You'll feel better. Ah, bleh. Is it like Lord of the Ringsies? Nope. No, okay, I don't know. It is The Lost Boys. Oh, oh, I knew that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, sorry. Yeah, The Lost Boys. <laughs> no, I, I didn't know it really. <laughs> Love story arc? Uh, Michael and Star. Yep, that's one I have. I would also have accepted The Frog Brothers and Any Method of Vampire Dispatch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well really? done, everybody. So at the end of the first round, Laura, you have five points. Oh, my God. And James... You have five points. Oh, Ooh. neck and That's neck. Exciting. I'm liking this quiz. Okay, so Valentine's Day episode. Ah. What is the best way to say you love somebody? Poetry. Before yeah. you. <laughs> I did ask you to prepare a little haiku. It yes. is actually called a haiku. It is called a haiku. Yeah. I thought a haiku was like a political brouhaha. You know, a backstabbing. So you thought he was just making up the word? What did you think? You wanted, well, I, I thought wanted this you must to be pronounced like political hey, brouhaha. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I give up. I thought it was a political thing. A, a but have, have you done a haiku? I have done a haiku. You've done a haiku? Yeah. Cool. Well, I have... I've done one. Yeah. So I'll start, and then we'll go for yours. All okay. right. So mine is... So haiku, for those of you... No, I'm going to mansplain. Is a, a three-line poem. First line's five syllables. Second line, seven syllables. Third line... Five syllables. Mm. Japanese. You don't have to do it in Japanese. Oh. So mine is, traversing the coast, those dickheads in the lighthouse made me sink my boat. Ah! <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. James? Right. Mine's a bit depressing, really. Oh, no. <laughs> Love is like a film. Immersing you in wonder. All too soon it's done. Mm. Oh... Well, that's your, you're quite nice. a deep character, though, so it doesn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah. So I've prepared mine. <coughs> Hold on. Are you ready? Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got a Bon Tempe. Ready? <laughs> Let's go. Wyndham, sultry hair. James Wilden's tender thigh string. Lighthouse, no, lighthouse beams aloft. <laughs> wow! And you pre, you pre-recorded the the music. That was that guy. Amazing. <laughs> so I think that was amazing. Yeah. But the reason I wanted to do a quick little poetry corner is because. I have been sent a proper poem yeah. by a published poet yeah. aimed specifically for us. What? Really? 
really. Why so, the hell would they do that? Our man in Canada. Oh yeah, Connor McDonald. Yeah, Connor as, McDonald. as well as being uh, a consultant paediatrician anaesthetist saving babies, <laughs> is also a published poet. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he's got a collection of poetry called Safe Spaces, which is published by Frog Hollow Press in Canada. A small wicked. little imprint. But if you check them out, they will ship globally. Just pay by pay- PayPal. I What's have it. it called it's again? brilliant. It's called Safe Spaces. Okay. Um, and he's also been published in Figurehead magazine. And in 2016, he was shortlisted for the Marina Lamatt Prize. I'm not in. Yes, I can't avoid this guy. Right, since I know he's awesome, man. Okay, so. and he's got a love for um, uh, my buddy Valentine. He's, he's he's a dude. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay, so this is a poem by Connor McDonald. Is this a haiku? Nope. Okay. This is pro- proper poetry, called "The Lighthouse at the End of the World." With the end unfolding around us, we need to know how we begin. We would fall asleep facing each other, devout like praying children, proud of how we fit together, mirror and universe taking turn to show each other everything. We would close our eyes to the sounds of our impending infestation, to the chew of manufacture and approaching deconstruction. We would collapse as if we were posed there, slowly molt into monuments, a fleshy installation, a fertile portmanteau. We would wake as electrified angels, remove antenna for procreation, building, unbuilding each other until a better behaviour is set. It would be as if we were placed here by an accidental magic, a heel of rock, a finisterre, where we might pray like children to live and shine forever, forever lying still. Wow! A casual drop in there! Jesus Christ! That whirring noise. That's a boat outside, and it's pretending it's a washing machine. Oh, right. Can I, um, can we put that on the Facebook page? Yeah, so I'm just going to, I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, I just need to double check with with Connor. That's great. That's amazing, isn't it? I need to look at it again, though. I find poetry quite inaccessible most of the time. Well, I've had to read that about 20 times to get my It would be kind of wonderful if that shit went down, though. We kind of need it all back again. I I can't imagine he would mind, but thank you so much, Connor. That is amazing. Maybe coronavirus will get us to that point. All right, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. No, it's good. (laughs) Connor did actually send me a note, kind of saying he had a view as to how we would each react to that. Yeah. I'll I'll tell you what I dig it. I'm fully up for it, man. Cool. Thank you so much, Connor. That was amazing. Okay. In the bean. Oh. Rattling through it. Oh, I love that noise, isn't it? It's got a warm feeling. What, the squid? No. <laughs> the washing machine. Ah. Oh, that one. Explain, Laurie, explain to everybody what In the Beam is. So In the Beam is, obviously, we stay up late and we force our light out into that fog and every now and again we land that light on a little gem that we need to bring to your attention. Nine times out of ten, you've already heard of it, but we do it all the same. Perfect. Do you want to go first? Yeah. So, um, I thought it was going to be The Mask of the Red Death, Vincent Price, but it turns out it wasn't. It got trumped by a film I loved when it first came out in 2010, and I still freaking love it. I watched it with my son. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Uh, yeah, it's just great. It's just an epic of epic epicness, I think was the tagline. Edgar Wright wrote it, so the dude who did Spaced, you know, and came from Hot that. Fuzz and, and... That's it, and then yeah. Hollywood took him Shaun on board. Dead. Um, it's a yes. kind of like a comic booky type film, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Very comic booky, very game-centric, so you've got the Zelda theme running through it throughout. Um... Does he have to kind I've of end up it. challenging the ex boyfriends yeah, yeah, yeah. his wannabe girlfriend? Yeah, so he's just like a Canadian. And they're all superheroes. Yeah. Type what thing. kind of thing, yeah. yeah. So he's, it was before kind of like the superhero films really. Do you know what? Exploded. I think I've seen the first half an hour. Isn't there like bits of like the text comes up on the screen? Why am I remembering that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got a bit of that on it. No. Oh, it's shit. freaking awesome. So yeah, he's just like a dude in a band in Toronto. I think they're in Toronto. And. Um, yeah, he kind of falls in love with this girl and they get together and it turns out actually for him to be her boyfriend, he has to defeat uh, her seven ex-evil boyfriends. And they all have certain powers and stuff like that and there's kind of manga and it's fights. The, it's and it's the weedy kid out of... Um... Yeah, uh, what's his name? He's just freaking really brilliant. famous film. 
Uh, he's because the other film he's in is with Jonah Hill, isn't he? Um, What's his ball name? I know he's in Arrested Development or whatever it is. It is Michael Serra. Yeah, he's great. I love him desperately. But anyway, Scott Pilgrim cool. versus the World. As I say, you've probably already seen it. You totally already know that it's a great film. But I just saw it again oh, recently, and it's just brilliant. <laughs> I've just made that clear. It's I brilliant. It. I'm going to watch it this afternoon, maybe. Yeah. James. Yep, yeah, um, right, so mine was going to be, Terry recommended a film to me called Enemy Mine, which I thought was great. <gasps> you saw Enemy Mine? Yeah, but I'm, but, but I'm afraid it got trumped. Uh, oh. I've watched loads of films this month, um, but it's it's quite a big one, really, but Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I still yeah. haven't seen that. Oh, do you know what? It's You know, I banged on about that film I saw, which had the Manson family in it. And, and they, they tricked they, history. They, yeah. Yeah. Well... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood does kind of exactly the same thing. Yeah. Except they make it a love letter to Sharon Tate. And it's yeah. um, it's just so beautifully done. And the way they handle it at the end, it doesn't involve Sharon Tate at all. It, it actually revolves around the characters that uh, Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Brad Pitt play. But it's just... It's, I think it's Tarantino at his best. It's just so it is amazing, funny. Yeah. The, the, the whole sequence with Bruce Lee is yeah. just brilliant. <laughs> it's just so mm. it's so clever, so funny. The, you know, his use of music, his use of colour, his use of everything just works. And, brilliant. And, you know, his characters, the way they, he, you know, Leonardo portrays this kind of fading um, TV star. It's done with so much love. Mm. And, you know, you just feel so happy for him at the end when things kind of work out or, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's just, he's just such a good it, filmmaker. It mm. is an amazing film, and especially because mm. all of those things, that character, colour, music, all that kind of storytelling, you think, this is so Tarantino, but it's missing the violence. Yeah. He solves that, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but and fuck it, me, does he solve that. And it's the right way to remember Sharon Tate and this, and the, the this, right amount of looking at the Manson family as well. You know, I mm. think you see um, Charles Manson for one shot for yeah. about three seconds. It's very very short, and mm. it's not. It doesn't become a glorification of what he did. No. You, you know, it's, yeah, yeah, and that's it. That's what I found. They made them out to be the dicks that they were. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. See, that's uh, that vilification, as it were, which is a thing that he does quite a lot. He did it with Django. He did it with Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. which is my kind of favourite. Whereas that, you know, you have that scene where Hitler gets shot in the face by a fucking machine gun. You see it. Not seen it. But yeah. <laughs> only halfway through. You're a dick. <laughs> well, you you've given away the end of your Hollywood buzz. A two shame no, on me. But that. Because you had a problem <laughs> was... with the other thing because they changed history and you thought it was disrespectful. Yeah. And I did actually mention in Glorious Bastards saying it's actually quite an interesting thing to do because, you know... I think it's, if it's done in, a, in, the, in right, the right yeah. way. Yeah. And they didn't use... Although, so when you see Sharon Tate in this film... The, uh, you Played you by Margot Robbie. You see, yeah, yeah, brilliantly. And amazing, you see her going to watch a film of herself. Mm. She goes to see herself in this movie. And the, 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 the cinema's... Only got three or four, five, six people in it. Hardly anybody in it, but they really enjoyed the film. And you see her just, just so sweetly realizing that people like her, and yeah, you know yeah. that's you yeah. know. So it's a celebration of her, not about her being victimized. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, which, as it should be, really. Yeah. You can get focused, you know, caught yeah. on the wrong kind of thing. It's brilliant. Good. I really want to see it. <laughs> yeah, and, and mine is one that you might not have heard of. It is Night Hunter. Right, it's on Netflix. Oh, it is Henry Cavill, Ben Kingsley, Alexandria Daddario, and Brendan Fletcher, mm. uh, and it's essentially a kind of low rent is the wrong term because it's it isn't shit, but mm. it's kind of like a low rent Silence of the Lambs. All oh, right, so okay. Henry Cavill plays a policeman <coughs> who searches out the worst in the kind of searches in all the dark corners of society for horrible people. Mm. Uh, and the film starts with a woman running through the woods, which is always, you know, uh, that's going to be bad, mm. in her knickers and a top, uh. and this guy following her. Um, Henry Cavill is the policeman trying to catch these people. Mm. Ben Kingsley is um, a retired judge who has uh, a young woman, and together, doesn't have, but he and this young woman... Uh, 
trap paedophiles. All right. So she lures them in. He kind of chemically castrates them, oh, takes their poor, money, poor redistributes pedophiles. it to, to everybody else. But it's it was a re- it's on Netflix. <clears throat> um, well worth ninety minutes of your time. Okay, great. It's good. And then there's a little bit. It's one of those bit of a twist. Um, yeah, it's good. Well worth a watch. Night Hunter. Oh. Night Hunter. Oh, I'm gonna watch that as well. Cool. So brings us to On the Rocks. Love on the rocks. Ain't no surprise. Laurie? Yeah! What is on the rocks? <laughs> well, I very rarely managed to bring anything to the table here, and I do have a personal rule of it Stop should be film. Yeah, it should yeah. be film. Oh no, sorry, I. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I've actually just listened to your question. I've got a, a 30 second delay. So, on the rocks is basically, yeah, there are rocks out there you can bump into a sack of shit that can fuck you up. So we're trying to flag to you. You probably already know this shit. Films that are shit. <laughs> and do you have one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's not actually a film. Uh, so it's, everyone's been raving about The Stranger, right? And it's not shit shit. Sorry, what's... Uh, yeah, what's The Stranger? Is that that one set in Manchester? Uh, it's set wherever it's set. I don't know where it is. What is Birmingham it? Birmingham or something. A TV show? It's just... Uh, TV show. It's yeah. definitely How set in Manchester because I've heard... Someone Some else guy's it. wife's gone missing. He's received a text saying, I just need time, but it's like, no, she hasn't gone missing. Something weird is going on. And quite rightly, something really weird is going on. Right. Um, and yeah, it's just got these kind of... Who's that? What does that mean? Like these strangers turn up and they say, your wife... Your, he's, this guy, as a, his wife's vanished, said, I need time. This woman just turns up in a cap complete stranger eh? and she says your children aren't your children your wife has always lied to you when she said she had a, um, a miscarriage that was a lie she only said it to keep you with her and he's like what? and all this seed goes in his head where is she what? anyway blah 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 and it escalates from there it's kind of interesting writing there's some clunky bits about it and it's just I think it's just a bit shit and everyone's raving about it and you think they're wrong yeah watch The Outsider or watch um, Can I just say, as well, uh, Strangers on Netflix, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, um, it's one of, because you don't really associate Netflix, it's, what, it's they've made a homegrown, it is set in Manchester, it's set all around there, mm. uh, a fictional town just outside Manchester, but I just don't think, from what I hear, it's just not worked at all. Oh, really? I, I, everyone I'm speaking to is like, oh, it's amazing, go check it out, they're loving it, they're okay. loving it. Well, Which is not. cool, because it's a British production, and you know, that, that's all really cool, I'm up for that. But it's, it, it reminds me, look, you know the Thin Blue Line, or whatever it's mm. called? Yeah. It's that comedy? Just the, no, not the Thin Blue Line, then. What's it called? The Red Line? The war, uh, the war film? The police, you know, inside police cops, and they any dodgy cop, they... Line of Duty! Jesus Christ! There was a line in it. It's got that line of duty crapness about it. Right. Oh. There okay. You go. I'll leave it there. Fair enough. Okay. James? Yeah, mine is a 2019 live action um, reimagining of Aladdin by Disney. Oh. <laughs> Flipping <laughs> that. Um, I mean, the Will kids S- quite liked it. Actually. Will Smith playing the genie is, I mean. It's a word for word remake as well, isn't it? Virtually, yeah. I mean, but. Um, Robin Williams should be t- turning his grave. He does his song. He does obviously one of the songs, and it's just awful. Yeah. I mean, it's his performance is. It's not even phoning it in. It's just terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible. <laughs> Guy, Guy Ritchie directed it. He should not be allowed to direct oh, was it Guy anything Ritchie? again. Is he? It's got no soul, no heart. Um, there's just very little to like about the film. Um, I tried watching it, and I got about two minutes in. I've, yeah, I mean, just a bit on the boat at the beginning. They're yeah. trying to give a backstory, yeah, which I, I didn't care enough about to find out what the point of it was. Did he become the genie? Yeah, um, um, he was. Um, so, spoiler: that was he was a genie, and that's after he'd been set free. Uh, you know, it was, but it was just appalling. Okay. I mean, and again, it's like you know, the Lion King. They did the same thing. What is the point? Yeah. Just go and watch the cartoon or make something new. Well, they've got money to burn, bruv. They were well, making a lot of money from these things. Well, People yeah. like you and your family are watching them. <laughs> and, like Dumbo, yeah, the, the, you're all the over Dumbo. Like, I'm not all over Dumbo. Your family's all over Dumbo. It's hearsay. It's a <laughs> rumor. <laughs> anyway, that's me. Okay, uh, and mine, my on the rocks is Hellboy, 
Oh no! Really? The new one, yeah, the new one, yeah, the David Arbor one. Uh, Have you seen it? Yes. Oh, I I've fucking hate it. it. I've actually seen it probably three times. Really? In the space of about three days. Deliberately. <laughs> yeah. You really, I'm you, not did a you fan really enjoy it? it? I just thought I, it was. I, it just had the feeling of a film that had changed direction. Yes. Midway through. Oh. And that they didn't really... Or that in post-production they'd kind of gone, I'm not sure, let's change so it. Yeah, I didn't get that. Pig in it or something. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stupid. No. Yeah, I really, rubbish. I loved like, the original. I loved the yeah. first two. I thought they were really good, those well-made, nice films. I didn't really like the yeah. Del Toro ones. I, 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 so I get the fact that they're trying to make... David Arbour and you know Ron, Ron Perlman looked like a particular artist's interpretation of Hellboy right yeah Magnolia whatever his name is and then David Arbour they have made to look like another artist's version of it yeah which is absolutely fine don't have any problem with that at all but I thought his prosthetics didn't move properly it, it looked like an actor wearing prosthetics I thought he looked great um, and I think it was great because I've, I've read the Hellboy comics and stuff like that yeah and what do you mean stuff like that what's the stuff like that <laughs> the you read the comics what's the stuff like that just for the audience so they know old sort of British folklore <laughs> and Baba Yaga oh stuff like that right and I'm Irish fables and things like that um, so yeah this is much more linked to that and it visualises it as well and it realises it really greatly I think and it's it's all set pretty much in uh, the British Isles, which is a wonderful thing, and it links into those kind of old British folk laws, and you see them on the screen. And I really, really liked it. You've got an Arthur, King Arthur at the beginning. As I say, you've got Baba Yaga in there, and a walking well, it's house. Got your thing yeah, as, really as this is mine on the rocks, don't listen to a word he said because it is utter ball bass. Yeah, it's not, it's really I good. Like it. I really liked it. And, okay. and you've got Lovejoy in it. You do have Lovejoy in it, but he's not very good either. He's great. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's Rubbish. Rubbish. Shane is always great. Rubbish. Terrible. Don't watch well. it. So at the end of that, controversy. <laughs> oh, by the way, The Stranger is amazing. You should definitely watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Hellboy was directed by Neil Marshall, who did The Descent, another great film, and Dog Soldiers. That kind of gives you a flavour. That this is... He's, he's definitely on the downwards slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Into the second round of our quiz. Woohoo! Let's do and this. And this round is called the Tender Touch. Oh. So, James. Yes. Why might you advise caution to anyone about to indulge in foreplay with Daniel Robertail? Okay. Well, I am. Um, is this anything to do with Freddy Krueger and his knives? Is it like a cryptic question? I it's, don't know who this guy is. You should know who this guy is. Oh. Danny Robertail. Yep. Danny Rob- Daniel Robertail. You know him better by a different name. <laughs> uh, do I know him by the name of... Is he like some sort of nasty villain? Yeah. Uh, Possibly if you, if you looked around here on yourself... Well, I was thinking Candyman. <laughs> Candyman. Well, who's that? Who, who, how, who's he then? He is Candyman before he gets killed. Oh, is it? Ah, oh, so what's the question? So the question is, why might you advise caution to anyone about to indulge in foreplay with Daniel Robertson? Because um, if you do that, you could well get your hand chopped off and smeared in honey and then get stung by bees or he might come and get you. It's because he's got a hook for a hand. Yes. Ah. Yes. This may not go as smoothly as it had in my <laughs> well, it can, well, I was kind of on the right track so with the, uh, You were on the right track, but you were. Wrong. Oh, yeah, well done. In I did not hands. know that was his name. Evidently. <laughs> now you know how random yeah, 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 this, yeah, yeah, this yeah, round is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Why, yeah. when Ryan Reynolds' character was a familiar, mm. did he have to be cautious during sex? Because he was too damn powerful. Because <laughs> no. it came out like, like wire. These are slight. Well, you have to figure out when he performed the his, the film his love the... sachet. The love sachet was just like cable. No, you had to scissor it off. The, no, the reality is that in Blade Trinity, the vampire oh, right. that turned him had her fangs in her vagina. 
Oh, awesome. That's, I, a, that's a good uh, I've sort of Valentine's seen film. Trinity. Teeth. That's a good film. For is Valentine's. it a good film? Play yeah, Teeth. Yeah. Uh, it's is the it like weakest of the three. three. Is, yeah, yeah, it's the weakest of the three, definitely. Oh. Okay, I think we'll quickly run through this round. Okay, oh, come on, like, well, now we know what it is. Okay, we'll James. Well, we go. But... <laughs> okay, James. Yes. What adventurous role reversal did Wayne w- Wade Wilson and Vanessa partake in to celebrate Valentine's? Wade Wilson and Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um. Again, you know Wade Wilson by a different name. Wait, yeah, but I recognise Wade Wilson. Oh, gosh. I'm going to go with... I don't know. He became the wench, she became the bus conductor. I don't know. In other words? But I have the got, film? I have not got a clue. Have you not? Oh, Wade Wilson is Deadpool. Right. And on Valentine's Day, she pegged him. Oh, right, yeah, is, nice. As you said. Yeah. So you kind of technically get the second point. Yeah, let's really go with that. What's going on? Okay, Laurie. <laughs> Why was Kevin Bacon's happy ending not quite such a happy ending? Because <laughs> he was invisible. No. Ah, I don't know. You're not even trying now. You both turned no. off this round, haven't well, you? Yeah. The His film? shoe fell off. Film? It was just right. too loose. So Kevin, well, we've got Footloose. We've got Invisible Tremors. Man. Tremors. Uh, Think earlier in his career. Flatliners. Uh, oh no! We're thinking Friday the Thirteenth. Yes, you oh. are. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was the question again? Why was stabbed. his happy ending not quite so? Right. Yeah, thing. because he gets stabbed. They back, he's having sex and they get stabbed all the way through. Yes, he does. Yes. Points to me. Points to James. Did you get like kebabbed with the yeah. elbow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last question in this round. But, Say yeah. fuck for that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. James. Yes. Who is the best lover? Freddie, Michael, or Jason? Ah, um... It's got to be Freddy, isn't it? Right. So, you could... Well, if we're arguing from, like, the reality of the fantasy... You the reality of the fantasy. Hall- <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Myers has never had sex because he spent his childhood in an institution. Um, and so I would say Freddy Krueger, unfortunately. Yeah, he can do the oh. tongue shit. He's got the reach. He can... Unfortunately, it is... Honorary lighthouse keeper Michael Ironside. Oh, oh, you got duped. Sorry. <laughs> Laurie. Yes. Last one in this round and then yes. we can get to the films. Uh, Who is the best lover? <laughs> <laughs> Maguire, Garfield or Holland? Who's Holland? It's a statistic question. Maguire, Garfield yep. or Holland? Yep. So we're talking about Spider-Men's, aren't we? The Spider-Man. Ah. Uh, who's the best lover out of those spider guys? Um, <laughs> I think it'll be a trick. It will be a trick, won't it? What about... Oh, I can't remember the name of the actor from the, the 70s TV show, or 80s, whatever it was. Um, oh, Maguire. <laughs> because of his sultry eyes. Unfortunately, it's none of the above. Oh. <laughs> It's Jake Gyllenhaal. Because ah! he's just delightful. <laughs> <laughs> right. The ah! end of the second round. I don't know what that round was about. But that's all right, because you got some points. Oh, great. You both got some points. It's six all. Oh, oh look at ten that. Right. I don't trust sixes. No. Thankfully, <laughs> we're now brought to our feature presentation. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> So this month is DC, and I think it's kind of um, fair to say you kind of reacted quickly rather than with consideration. But <laughs> yes, true. a few little bits of detail about DC. They are the famous comic book rival to Marvel. Detective Comics. Founded in 1934, um, and they brought us Superman shortly after 1938 and Batman in 1939. DC Films heavily laced their canon with Superman and Batman movies. Um, however, they have moved periodically into other characters, not very successfully. 
such as Jonah Hex. Anybody seen that? No. no. Wow, that is shit. Jonah that is Hex? Who? Jonah Hex. It's um, Thingy Brolin. Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin is proper shit. And is when this, is it coming? Is he a superhero, this Jonah Hex? It's can't, kind of. He can't be killed type Is he a bit thing. fishy? He's uh, is set in a weird western oh. type thing. Hmm. Green Lantern, another stinker. Uh, yeah, that didn't work. Did Constantine, it? which we did propose. Swamp yeah. Thing. I um, like and more recently we've had Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and all that kind of jazz. Aquaman, yeah. things like that. Obviously the Superman films. Su- the more Superman recent two, Superman films. Fantastic Superman well, 3, Superman a lot of qualities. Films, yeah. And 1, very good. I've got a question though. Yeah. Why has DC not managed a similar kind of success to Marvel? Is this part of the quiz? No, this is just a question. Mm. Um, no well, trick can, question this is just no no, no well you can if you think back to like 1989 that Batman stuff when that came out that was gargantuous mm-hmm. on uh, par with what kind of Marvel I know now they can, they're making quicker films and a lot more of it but that was massive no, I, think, I, I, I think I think the reason why and I, I think you've got to put it at Nolan's door I think the Batman uh, Begins trilogy is the reason for DC's failure into films why because that was so successful yeah uh, but what they did with it is they grounded it in so much reality, yeah. it became a format for DC to kind of shy away from the fantastical elements yeah. um, and to make ground all their stuff in like gritty, dark realism. And gritty, dark realism can only work so much in a, in a superhero thing. There is no... So they took out all the fun. Yeah. So with the, but they've when, tried their but, best. Well, no, but when Superman came back, it was so... Dark, so serious, so up itself. Really, and I think they've the, they've been trying to catch up with that ever since. There's, the reason Marvel worked mm. is that it didn't take itself too seriously. It started laughing at itself. That's the heart of the comics itself, though, because it's just completely all bets are off. You can go anywhere. Whereas DC, again, those stories. It's about a guy whose parents got killed, and he's. Going around basically. Like no, but that's not yeah, the reason. Yeah, let's not forget that they did do Swamp Thing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But also, but, uh, there was it was still dark and serious with the um, the um, with the um, you know Tony yeah, Coulson Batman, but they but, mm. but it was fantastic. But equally, yeah, if you yeah, look yeah, at yeah. if you look at Marvel and you look at Tony Stark, he's a man with a death wish who is an alcoholic. Yeah, well, yeah, that's pretty they, dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've made yeah. it all really grey. Whereas if you look at one of the reasons DC's been so successful on TV. Mm. is that they have made it light and fantastical you know so you've got The Flash is um, you know I've, I stopped watching it because I've got a bit bored but The Flash is a colourful fun um, crazy out there show Gotham yeah. was the same yeah. Yeah. really extreme fun characters um, and they what they've actually done which Marvel haven't been able to do is create a whole world on through the TV series mm. and I think their big mistake was they should have actually allowed those characters to hit the large screens, you know? Mm. So the but maybe that's kind of what Marvel are doing, and DC kind of want their own kind of line, and you know, because you don't want to be, well, they've just changed their tack now, haven't they? It's relatively recent. You kind of go, we give up. We, yeah. we have to do slightly. Well, look at what we've got. One, of the, one of the most popular films of the Marvel year was what? One of the most popular films, the best film of the year so far. Have you seen the Joker? Right. Yeah, yeah, but I you, know officially that's not an official DC thing, but that's kind of an well, interesting space. Well, it's from space. DC, got, but that is not a, again. That's not. That's exactly what it is. It's not a superhero. They're, film. they're standalone yeah, films. So as why well. can't they? They can just be their own thing. They don't have to do the Marvel thing. But, Let's try and get their own. Like, yeah, but they're not. Say, but Nolan they're films. failing. It's failing. Yeah, because they're failing. Because we're, we're kind of in this middle ground, like you say. Nolan's films were really successful. They were a sh- kind of always ashamed to be that superhero exactly. thing. That's what it is. It. That's what it is. DC, then the in characters in DC are ashamed to be superheroes. And that's why it's failing. I think you're absolutely right. But we're in this middle ground where it's gone a little bit wobbly. Wonder Woman did very well. Everything else hasn't really hit because it is trying to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more superhero and It's not quite working. And then you get the Joker. I know it's not an official DC film, but this is something really interesting right here. Now we've got Patterson, right? Patterson's a chopsy, chopsy actor. He's like doing really interesting stuff. He's worked with David Cronenberg. He's doing. He did the Lighthouse recently. He's. He, I think he's going to take it quite seriously. And there's that opportunity to maybe go. Okay, let's go again. This I is what I DC like can do. do. But, but it's maybe a darker it's, place. Yeah. Do they have to do 
the standalone movies and just accept that that this is who we are. Yeah, let's do standalone films because what they tried well, to not do with standalone, like, but just take but, it. Well, they're doing the well, they're doing DC. All right, so they're doing superheroes for adults. But because whenever Joker, it's not that is, see, you know Marvel is for kids. I mean, yeah. let's be yeah. honest. DC and Marvel. Well, these comics DC should be admit, for children. Not Marvel. I think. Those... Well, these are these are not these are not films for kids, and and there's only so much adults are going to want. You know, well, especially when you think, look, I think they will because what we're really talking about is Aquaman didn't work, and you know Wonder Woman and the Superman stuff didn't work. Because Justice it's a, League just a didn't bit work. Too Justice League confused. didn't work. None of it's worked. Suicide it Squad serious, didn't work. Joker, yeah. Joker it, worked it, because it was basically still trying to be superhero. It, it, and that, that's what I was going to say. That they, d- you look at Marvel and they had a plan. Yeah. From Iron Man to get yeah. into Infinity War, Redemption, yeah. or whatever. Whereas it feels like DC have gone, we need to throw 16 characters at this film. So you yeah. get suicide. Yeah. Let's do what Marvel are doing. Exactly. Don't and the, do and they that. Have to rewrite, go, rewrite, 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 showing it to audiences. You know, Suicide Squad's two different films. Yeah. The whole, their whole project's been one big disaster. Right. And they don't... It's nothing, just this middle but ground. But there's nothing... It's not this a middle ground. This new Batman nothing, stuff is going to be fucking interesting. There's nothing they can do. We've had about 10 different Batmans. You know, this Patterson one's. I mean, be Batman vs Superman was an embarrassment. It was awful. I actually quite like. Uh, Let, well, Lex Lu- the they, they created Lex Luthor as. Um, oh yeah. He was more like the Joker oh, than God. he uh, than he was. Yeah. Anything else? It was an embarrassment. Yeah, it was not good. It was not. Good. Yeah, and the only reason why the Joker works is basically they've made what was that film that they keep banging on about from the seventies. Uh, taxi driver. No, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. No, uh, the comedy one. Uh, well, oh, King, King of, of comedy. comedy. It's yeah. basically a mixture of King of Comedy and Taxi Driver. You know, with the Joker stuck on as an image. Yeah, it's nothing. And to a do. serious kind of kind of social comment on yeah. what's kind of going on out there. Yeah, but it's, allowed, it's, a, it's an adult film. So if DC want to make adult films, yeah, I think that's, that's what fine. they should. I think they should admit. Just accept. I think that. where they went wrong, like you're talking about, you're talking about Aquaman, you're talking about the Superman stuff. They were trying to go, okay, Marvel's being really. All right, successful. well, I like to see them Let's do the joke of a version of Mister Freeze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think I think the Joker was a kind of a sign of the times. You know, yeah. it's a flash in the pan of what. You know, how dark our kind of world is at the moment. I watched um, Birds of Prey recently. You know, yeah. two and a half, um, the sequel to Suicide Squad, or, you know, the one with... Oh, yeah. oh right. Oh, right. Two hours, 40 minutes of just throwing shit at the screen. Yeah. I you think we've seen less then? that. <laughs> yeah. And okay, so, yeah. so we shall have to wait and see, right? Yeah, I think it's going to get... Well, I think make... we've already seen. I mean, they're losing money hand over fist. Yeah, but Joker's going to make, has made a... And as you say, it's not officially a DC movie. Mm. But yeah, that so has well, absolutely it is, but it's a DC it. character. So maybe now they go, eh, maybe we just need to do yeah. our thing. Do your thing. We are not going to be able to emulate Marvel. Yeah. And actually, it'd be interesting to see where Marvel go from here. Yeah. But we just have to crack on. I mean, it will be interesting to see because this new Batman film is featuring the Catwoman, isn't it? So, you know, we've. The Catwoman. Uh, well, they always they, they say these things. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, a, I'm just a bit. So it only, I, mean, it's we get, I think I think the Catwoman conjures different mental images to Catwoman. <laughs> well, the maybe Catwoman we're getting, has, maybe, has got a trolley full of cats. <laughs> maybe we're getting old. I bet she's called the Catwoman. Maybe we're getting old, but it seems like only five minutes ago since we had the Batman with their new version of the Catwoman of Catwoman with <laughs> with um, you know her Michelle basically Feifel? being oh, no she's great. the one in the trilogy. Where she was basically just oh a cat. Hathaway. She was oh, yeah. yeah. She was a cat burglar. You know, yeah. there was no fantastical oh, quality yeah, yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, she didn't have any like six cat like scents. She yeah. was kick ass. You know, yeah. so she was kick ass. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that what route they're going to take with yeah. this Patterson. Is it going to be? It's going to be really good. serious and grounded in reality because we've had that already. Yeah. It's going to be good. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about the ones that got away. Um, one of you proposed Constantine. Yeah. Yeah. Why did you propose Constantine? I just like it. It's I good think it's fun. a really good film. It's, yeah, it's a good film. Um, good characterisation. Um, Talk about I, the dark side, though. It is about a man who's got terminal lung cancer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this Constantine... Take <laughs> in, uh, Constantine's character, he was invented in a Swamp Thing comic. So he but, came from but, that, but also written well, by Alan Moore. Also, it's, it's a character that's always been not for kids. Yeah. You know, this, car, this yeah, yeah, comic absolutely. wasn't written for children. Yeah, well, I, like I say, it was in Swamp Thing. No, but te- all right, teenagers, came. but teenagers, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Different yes. to like Superman or Batman, which you, you know, could argue, 
um, you know, I know there are more adult fiction. Can I just say the Joker as well? That is based on a, um, a graphic novel, isn't it? Because I've read the graphic novel. Oh, I, have, I don't know. Yeah, about a comedian. It could be funny, but I think it's very loosely based on it. Well, there's a killing joke you have. He's, he's, he's a comedian, but yeah, it doesn't go where oh, no, the Joker okay. goes. Oh, I'm sorry. You also, it's all right. You also proposed Burton's Batman? Was that you? Yeah. I it's because like I got Batman. really yeah. stumped. I just went and mental. Ignored on... all the Superman films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. a pity that is because it would have been nice to visit one of the Superman films. Yeah. But we didn't. We what didn't. I did pick. Oh, fuck it out. Was. <laughs> we're going to start. With V for Vendetta. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about the film, and then we'll play a clip. So don't jump in just yet, Rory. Mm-hmm. Uh, v for Vendetta was released in 2005. It was directed by James McTeague. Screenplay by Lily and Lana Makowski. Wakowski, sorry. Um, graphic novel by Alan Moore, and uh, based on a graphic novel by Alan Moore and David Lloyd. Uh, music was by Dario Marianelli. Budget was purport- reportedly $54 million and at the box office... Fucking hell. It did 132 and a half. Let's play a clip. I wish I wasn't afraid all the time, but I am. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. Those caught in violation of curfew will be prosecuted without leniency or exception. It's past curfew, you know. First, first experiences with (laughs) Vendetta. You're doing really good in this scene. Oh no, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. What, 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 what? Some notable actors in this film. Natalie Portman. Yeah, Hugo Weaving, John Hurt. No, sorry, who did Hugo Weaving play? Really? He's he's V. He's V. Oh right, okay. Well, yeah. Oh, you don't see his face here. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> and a shit ton of British actors. Essentially, they put a note out in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. So turn up. We're doing a British film. Oh. Who's our on. Irish guy? The our cop. Irish guy. He only wrote those three down. Oh mm. no! Come on. Uh, uh, what's his name? With me. I totally know his name. I don't know who Hugo Weaving is. So we've got Rupert Graves, we've got Stephen Ray. That's it, Stephen Stephen Ray, thank you. Tim Piggott Smith, uh, Roger Allen, Ben Miles, Sinead Cusa. I was thinking of Stephen Ray. He's in The Stranger, by the way. He's quite good in it. Lots and lots and lots of different people in here. Um, Laurie. Oh, it's your moment. God. One minute synopsis. (laughs) Oh, damn it. Right, okay, so we're in a a suppressive, is it totalitarian? Is that the right word? If you like. State. Britain is being controlled essentially by Big Brother. Um, we're all rationed and shitty and everyone's kind of being watched. And there's this anarchist maverick that's appearing and blowing up places called V. And... This young girl gets caught up in his story or whatever. He takes her into his confidence and she learns about his anarchy and the importance of it. And then you learn about what he came from and then he goes out and fucks more shit up. But people are trying to capture him and fuck him up. Kind of. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I will admit I didn't get to see it. I've seen this about five, six times. But this, I recently haven't been able to see it. I okay. apologise. Well, well, okay. That's awkward. Yeah, it is mm. a bit, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know whether we can do it now. No, I don't think you can say anything Seems like else. T- this, this is really based on three wheels on a wagon and yeah. you've got two wheels. <laughs> yeah, way. and that, we know that that can't... It just doesn't work, work, does it? Yeah. I'll do my best. Okay, first memories. James. I've never seen it before. Really um, have seen it. Yeah, um, I realise now that I know very, very little about the gunpowder plot. Why don't they make a film about that? It's not... Is there that much about the gunpowder plot? No, no, but I just thought... (laughs) It would be good to make... uh, There isn't a film. That'd be a great film, wouldn't it? Like a big blockbuster in the summer. Yeah. About the gunpowder plot. I'd never seen it before. And I I was um, pleasantly surprised. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I was really excited about it. I read the comic before I saw the film, and I loved the comic so much. I was enjoying it so much. It's one of those ones where you just eat it to pieces, and you never want it to end, and it did end. And then a couple of years later, I find out they're making a film about it, so really excited about that. Watched it, and yeah, of course it's a disappointment. There's so many layers of the book that's not really there, but they do. I think they do a, a solid job, to be honest. And famously, obviously, Alan Moore always disassociates himself with the film of his stories, as it were, because he knows it's not going to work. But I think out of the ones that have been done of his work, these, this is one of the better ones, kind of on par with Watchmen kind of feel, I think. So I've, I liked it. I liked it. So what in the graphic novel did they not pick out? Um, there's loads and loads of stuff. What, there's, like? It's, oh, for God's <laughs> sake, so basically these murders that V is making, and he leaves his calling card, the red or the white rose, whatever it is. So that's kind of your opening scene. That's a much bigger piece where you've got the, the cop trying to f- track down V, and as you follow the cop, you start learning about what V came from and how he was kind of created in a way. You do and get that in the film. I know you do, but it's much, much more detailed and the motivations of these Nazis, for want of a better word, uh, why they're doing these experiments, and you, yeah, you just learn, out, you learn about the doctors and their backgrounds and stuff like that, so that's much wider. And then obviously the, the dialogue, which is a huge thing, because V has a very specific way of talking, where he, he drops a V as much as he, he possibly does, yeah. can, and it's spectacular. Yeah. Obviously, Alan Moore's writing is very, very... He's a very cultured man. He has very, very broad parameter, as it were. He or puts it into his... Or a dictionary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, the, the work of play, you know, he's putting like Rolling Stones lyrics in there. Uh, Alistair Crowley's in there. The gunpowder plot, obviously. Uh, but like loads of really cultural, like little, little stepping stones. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about that. It, and is that... How much of the Wachowski's script is mm. a lift because that yeah. stuff is really difficult and it is really obvious with it with yeah. these speeches I mean that stuff is yeah 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 difficult. so I think uh, I don't I mean, know word for word yeah, yeah. but I think most of the kind of like proper monologues that he says are pretty much what you've got but there, there's a lot more text in the book and all that stuff but it goes really for all the characters even their thinking is in the, in the comic is 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 so rich and good and nourishing. And, you know, I suppose you can't really get that via Stephen Fry making Eggy in the Basket (laughs) kind of thing. I don't think there's Eggy in the Basket in the comic. Do you not? No. That's disappointing. No. That was kind of the standout feature. Yeah. I do love Stephen, though. But what do we think of the performances, then? Um, I I I thought the performances were all very good. I thought John Hurt was brilliant. Uh, but he's, he's, he's kind of into those totalitarian films, isn't he? Yeah. He's 1984. Yeah, yeah. He but he's that. A, he's the other side of the coin. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, 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 I thought Portman was really good. Bit of a you know, a cockney accent was a little bit. It was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah. A bit South African every now but and then. I but I like the dystopian. It was really weird watching it because it was just. When did it come out? What year? Uh, I think question. it was it's the same year of the bombings, it, so they had to kind of delay it. A bit. It, I suppose it, it came out just... 2005. Right. So it came out on the cusp of our, I suppose, technical revolution. So our world's changed so much now. Yeah. So it looks so dated, but yeah. that world is just quite there. So seeing their alternative kind of dystopian future is weird. And we're, yeah. It's like watching the bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, it does definitely have a distinct look and feel to it, though, doesn't it? Which actually, I think, I kind of thought... Uh, I'm okay with that. It, it's yeah. all, it, it isn't like I look at it and judge it harshly for no, I like, predicting a poor It made picture. it quite refreshing. Mm. But it's just kind of a little capsule in and out of itself. Yeah. Just sat there going, mm. this is what Yeah, it, it was a, just a moment of time that I remember quite distinctly. And yeah, The look it. of it is definitely influenced, again, back to the comic. And the comic was it written in the 80s, and it was basically a reaction to Thatcherism and what she yeah. was. And this was kind of like, okay, this is where we're going if we're going to follow this Thatcher shit. And the comic is very, very 80s, so I think that feeling of the bill and the kind of the simpleness of it is probably in the film. They're trying to replicate that kind of feel. I suppose as well, I was watching something the other day, and it had an old um, 
um, music, what's it, not iPhone, what they're called, I, iPods, iPods, with the, the old graphic in it, and it's like, Jesus Christ, that looks so dated. The world we're living in now moves so quickly, yeah. I guess, and yeah, it was yeah. just weird and nice to see it like that. Yeah. And this is only 15 years ago. Yeah. You kind of think, well, yeah. that's no time, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. But completely different. The look and feel, how close, I haven't read the graphic novel, Yeah, is these look Alan Moore's theme. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's Bob on, so the same haircut, the same face, and they'd already they were already writing this. They were right in deep into writing it, and they hadn't actually figured out the look of him yet. Um, and in the then, graphic novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was the the, the artist guy. It was like, should we make it like a Guy Fawkes thing? Because he's a bit of an anarchist. And they like drew the hat, drew the. So it was the last kind of moment. Thing it was kind of yeah, like about three quarters of the way through that actual that mask and the hair right. and the hat. Came along, they were like, "Pow, that's it." I love the voice, the vo- and it worked really well with that. Hugo Weaving yeah. does really well. He does really, it's really spot well. on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but when you're saying about the timing of it, it was a different age. Very interesting, you said that. So we, you know, obviously terrorism is its thing in 2000, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel terrible. Now. So I think the bombings when did the in, twin in towers London, happen? So that was 2000, 2000, wasn't it? 2000 or 2001? 2001, something like that. Something like that. And then so London obviously, of the world freaking changed, mm. kind of thing. So that could have been an inspiration of kind of this stuff coming out. Well, I don't think but, they do it now, blowing up the Houses of Parliament. You know, well, it's, this, it's quite a shocking thing to see, really. That's it. So this film was due to come out um, literally the same week that happened. They were like, whoa, we cannot, we cannot. Well, you mean the London, film. you're talking about the London bombings. The London bombings, London bombings. bombings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they had to hold it back for a good, like, I think six months or something like that. Because that, that image of the, the, the underground tube yeah. train yeah. full yeah. of bombs going to Parliament. But yeah, I'm saying I'm not sure they'd make this film with it. This day and age, really. I know it's based on a comic, so but it's really well, it's, important. I think, I think we need do. films I, like this. Exactly. I was, I was going to, I was going to say. We, if you look at some of the characters, so you've got, um, or specifically, you look at Lewis Prothero, who is the TV, yes. whipping oh, people gosh, up into a frenzy yeah. of nationalism yeah. and yeah. Christianity and all yeah. these. Oh, the we are media, this, we that, and yeah, the Piers Morgan of his day. It. So, I've actually got here, is Piers Morgan our Lewis Prothero? Yeah, yeah, Lewis yeah. Lewis Prothero is played by Roger, Roger Allen. Um, and how near to... Because I was watching this, and you think, okay, this is 15 years ago. Um, okay, we don't have curfews. So, the, the, the premise of the film is you've got John Hurt, who is essentially a politician who has taken over on uh, a, a ticket, essentially, of... I'm here to protect you from, like Palpatine and Star from the unknown dangers of foreigners and this. Oh, that, that sounds familiar. Yeah. And he's got his security forces are called the Fingermen and they rule the country with a rod of iron. We're not there with that yet. But I was watching this feeling distinctly uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. about some of the storylines. So the, the Prothero character, mm. I just saw Piers Morgan. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Just, just direct hate but arguably, you could say as well again nowadays that iPod has turned into the iPhone. Any media platform, we are at risk to have Prothero yeah. positioning well, but whatever back then, they want to position. Back then, I don't is. think there was a Prothero. No, like no, absolutely. I mean, we not. had like um, John Gaunt on Big Sky exactly, and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. we've always had right wing people, but someone so prominent. But that's a very small yeah. group I mean, it was of very, people he can reach. Yeah, on our, local our, radio. TV, our TV, to have someone that kind of opinionated and right wing back then would have been unheard of on breakfast television. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it's weird. The, it's Enoch weird Powell on TV nowadays. quite a lot. But that's what you need. We need anarchy in the UK, and there's not enough of it at the minute. We need more and more and more it, and more it of is, it. It is that there's there's a quote in it that says um, the people should not be scared of their government. Government Fuck should yes. be scared of the people. Yeah, and I think yeah. we've kind we're all of just we're just scared little twats. Not that we're well. We've given it. Well, it's your own fault for giving him so much power, listener. And that's you know, I didn't do it. Not a massive majority can do what he want. But that's the challenge, isn't it? And and it's the same in here that. In this film, it was a case of, let me paint you a picture that is terrifying. They're coming for you. It doesn't matter who they are. They're coming for you. They're coming for you. To protect you, you just have to say, okay, look, you might not want cameras on every corner, but they're going to protect you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you just need a flip of the intention of the person controlling the cameras, and you're in deep shit. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. So this was a real. Uh, I actually really love this film. Yeah, I think I think it's great to watch today. I, I loved. Um, can we talk a little bit about the, the, the Stephen Fry TV show? Moment? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Great. So Stephen the Fry. Benny Hill bit. Yeah. yeah. That's so, so, music was. so Stephen Fry's character is essentially the soft, easily digestible, parboiled egg. Yeah. of a meal yeah. that it just keeps everybody in check keep everybody looking at the screen and laughing and they don't notice what's happening behind them mm. um, V comes in and blows up the old Bailey it starts with him destroying the yes. old Bailey and taking over the centralised TV the only TV channel essentially yeah. in the country um, the John Hurt character has insisted that they can project TV into everybody's home so he has access to the whole population and he says you are being led astray. You are being corralled like sheep. In one year from today, I'm going to fuck some shit up. Blow up the houses of Parliament. Up, I don't think he says he's going to blow up the houses of Parliament. Yeah, oh, right, yeah, yeah. he says, I'm going to fuck some shit up. Um, and then you have a year where Hurt is trying to catch him. Yeah. And I've completely lost... What did you want to talk about? Uh, the TV show where they... Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so you get all these kind of small acts of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Dissent from the population, kind of spray painting the. Oh right, yeah, the yeah. signs coming in, inspiration. And Stephen Fry's character makes a stand by instead of doing his soft boiled egg, easily digestible TV, he changes his kind of format. Mm. Explain what happens, Jen. Oh gosh, I can't. Well, I can't or just in a high level. <laughs> um, it, well, they just embarrass the hell out of the John Hurt character, don't yeah. they? They make a making the butt of all the make, yeah, jokes, butt, butt of all the yeah. jokes um, <laughs> which, as it should be, you know, as yeah. politicians should be made fun of and stuff. And obviously, the reaction to that's really bad. Um, oh, and um, but he thinks he's impervious. Yeah, he thinks he's going to get away from it. Get and, away with it. And, 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 what, and what it's really doing as well is um, feeding the nation's desire for the V character, isn't it? And that's yeah. what makes them all be comfy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they all slowly get inspired, and then you, at the end of yeah. the film, you see the scene of like "I am Spartacus" kind of thing. They're all, they're all V. Yeah, it's interesting because it is that um, oh, again. Just watching this film, thinking, "Shit, the bed." How have we got to where we are? Yeah, that just kind of, lazy fuck. That super thin-skinned politicians. You go back thirty years; they were all rhinoceros hide yeah. because there were all sorts of shit was said yeah. about them, mostly true. And now you've got kind of we've gone this kind of claims of bullying and all. I don't think you can really say that. And mm. it's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, but then but it's hard though because on the other side you're saying you know we've got these rigid politicians, but then we've got you know anti-Semitism coming through parties, party politics. You know, that wouldn't have happened 30 years ago. You know, so it's... You know, we had a politician murdered. Yeah. You know, Joe Cox was murdered, so it's... it's Yeah, no, so the point is... But that's the problem, isn't it? That you have these moments where Joe Cox is murdered, for example. Quite rightly, everybody should be kind of going, hold on a minute, there has to be a threshold of what you can and can't say, and we have to consider people's safety. It's when that gets co-opted by shit bags to say actually I just, I just want to shut this conversation down and yeah. I'm going to claim that this is against my rights or whatever it might be it's, it just is a fascinating yeah. I think it's just really fascinating I think to be honest I think this film back to the film in itself um, as I say reading the, the comic book fan blooming tastic you, you touched on the stuff that we're talking about here and more and then some but the film in itself when I got to the end of it it kind of kind of reminds me of uh, a burrito I had a couple of days ago I got from I can't remember what they're called tacos or something like I'm that hungry they cost, it, cost <laughs> about six, it cost about six quid and they're like do you want carry on the rice or brown rice I was like carry on the rice chicken please da, 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 da. and I ate it and it was kind of good but it was like uh, it didn't taste enough it wasn't really there anyway I felt a little bit like that at the end of this but it also touches on as well that thing of when does a terrorist become is a freedom fighter and yeah. vice versa well, that kind of thing but he definitely is a freedom fighter and he definitely is needed but that's well hold on but that let's be honest that's what terrorists will always say themselves well yeah, yeah 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 should we, should we he's um he's he's a freedom fighter because we get the feeling he wins 
Yeah, yeah. And we say for it from freedom. If you lose, and we say it from his perspective. Yeah, and and you're right. His is fighting the whole kind for of freedom. S- set people free. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Should we score it? <laughs> yeah, because we effects, haven't been talking for a while. Well, well, effects not a massively effective yeah, not film. Really, nothing really to talk about. Music. Not intrusive. I thought it was all right. Any plot holes? I've got one. Yeah. Where, where did you get the train? The tube so at train. the end, he fills a tube train full of explosives. Yeah. Sends it on a disused line to the Houses of Parliament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blows up the Houses of Parliament. Mm. Where did you get the train? Well, he's down there. Why well, some of them left him down there? <laughs> basically, <laughs> you got you got uh, obviously uh, vibrations of the Phantom of the Opera. Obviously, 1984, The Count of Monte Cristo. Where he actually quotes in the film as well. Yeah. That kind of sort of isolation bit where she's in the prison cell. Oh, I love cell that bit. Little, I love yeah. that whole thing. He's kind of training her in a way. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, that kind of counter... I think we assume that people have seen these films that we're reviewing because we really go to detail. About yes, them. okay. Can okay. we score it? Because I'm really hungry. I don't know one, <laughs> one very quick one. <laughs> Memorable scenes. This is why you normally drive, James. Memorable scenes. Oh, well, um, uh, the bit with all the Vs in it when, yeah. when they all turn up at the end, I thought yeah. that looked great. I like Although, his... where did he get, how did he make the masks? All those masks for the yeah. whole of London. Yeah, where did he make them? There, there are obviously a lot of artisans out there. Huh? Uh, that's what happens under oppression. Um, <laughs> it's probably his lair. So all the yeah. layer. pop, his, his layer. layer. So he lives in like a, <laughs> a pop culture. There's loads of references to this, that, and that. You know, your eye, wherever your eye yeah. will land, it will be a reference to some sort of cultural yeah. Yeah. thing. Well, have they stolen loads of culture back? Or yeah. something? So they've banned it all. My, my yeah. memorable scene is when V kills the Chancellor yeah. and then Creedy. Yeah. Yes. So underground, he's Creedy is the leader of the Fingermen, and they're all fucking trying to some shit he's done a deal with Creedy to get to the Chancellor because he needs to pop the Chancellor um, and then Creedy thinks well we're just going to fuck you up mm-hmm. but man V's good with knives yeah uh, <laughs> take some shit down yeah okay. last question before we score yeah. does it stand up today I think yeah we definitely yes. said yes a it, it very yes. resonates yeah, definitely even stronger today probably but okay. we need it we need someone anyone we do Okay, let's score it. Okay. Okay, so, um, performances, seven, Laurie. Um, yeah, seven. Seven. Effects, Laurie. Uh, seven. 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 Plot, James. Eight. Eight. Nine. Uh, rewatch, eight. Seven. Five. Direction, Laurie. Uh, seven. 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 Cinematography. Seven. 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 <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Sound six. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to... Yeah, five. Seven. Originality. Uh, well, it's not... In the film itself, no. It's not at all. But if you don't... have never read the comic book or anything Original. like that. Stop going on about <laughs> the comic book. Oh. Uh, well, I can't... I can't five. Nine. It was very original. Eight. I thought, I thought it was original. Well, um, that's the enjoyability. Well, of James. course, it's coming from the somewhere. Everything comes from a source. If we're talking about originality in the film. All right, okay, fine. James. All right, enjoyability eight, seven, seven, and life-changing past or present four zero. The film or the idea? The, well, the film. We've always from the film. Just the film alone. Yeah. Don't get angry. We're Two. Talking, it's called the movie lighthouse. Two. Not the book lighthouse. I oh, know, I know. That's why I gave it a five from plot. Right. Okay. Six to up. Cool. 62. <laughs> 62 from me. 62 from James. 65 from me. Oh, no. I think I might be borderline diabetic. Yeah. That sounds bad. I just need to have that sweet. <laughs> Oh, lovely, horrible. As you put another in your mouth. <laughs> what are they? I don't know. I thought they were something that they're not. Jelly They buttons. look like, I think they're licorice. Oh, it's free. It's, it's um, Bassett's licorice all sorts, but not made by Bassett's. 63. 63. Giving us a movie lighthouse score of 63.3.
which puts it somewhere on our leaderboard. I can tell you that. James, where does that put it on our leaderboard? Okay, well... Sorry, so- Megan, he's eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me into trouble. Shall I She'll be distract her? Um, on the 2020 leaderboard, it's in third place. What? Pretty good. And overall... Mm, it's it's thirty second. Thirty second. Just below house, <laughs> uh, but above the running band and that's with scissor hands. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to take a quick break and then we'll come back with the second film. Yay! So yeah, Valentine's special. Is there a film that you would say that kind of synopsises love, that encapsulates love in a beautiful way? What would you say, James? Uh, shut up. We were talking about this earlier, and I was thinking, oh, Requiem for a Dream. And we went, <laughs> not Requiem for a Dream, so I don't know. James didn't say it out loud. I knew exactly ah. what he was What would you say? Oh, on that line, Notebook. Oh, man, The Notebook. That is something. So, that up. is a film. Up. 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 Pixar. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit, Again, man. beautiful. I think no, but might trump it. But I would say Harold and Maud. You ever well, seen that? I haven't Lord. seen it, no. Yeah, Harold it's about... and Maud is excellent. So Maud is like a pensioner. She's about... Um, and Harold is like 17 and they fall in love. And he, he's obsessed with kind of killing himself. I, I, yeah, I saw a, a play version of that, which was rubbish. Well, yeah. the film is very good indeed. Alrighty. Okay, so we're back. Just before we get into the second and... Almost certainly best film we've ever reviewed. Um, it's it's that time again. I know you're excited. It's round three of the quiz. Yes! Oh yes! Okay. Final round? No. Nope. Oh god. One more after this. <laughs> okay. And I'll just keep in mind the style of my quiz. Right. Yes. All right. Okay. This is the music round. Oh yeah. No clips. Oh. Can't be bothered with that. James. <laughs> yeah. First question is to you. Uh uh-huh. If a picture paints a thousand words, then why can't I paint you? Uh, I don't know. Van Gogh. It's, it's actually because my medium is sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> Laurie. Uh, yeah. It's got what it takes. So tell me, why can't this be love? <laughs> it's got what it takes. Why can't this be love? I mean, that's not the tune to the song. <laughs> but it's kind of irrelevant in this one. Why can't this you know Karate Kid. Quip. Karate Kid. So that's Van Halen. Okay. Uh, it's because you oversalted the caramel. Okay. <laughs> okay. James. Yes. What's love got to do? Got to do with it? Um, not much. It's just a second-hand emotion. Yeah. Oh, so good. I'm going to give you that. Yes. It's actually. It's because love. Love changes everything. But I'm, you can. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right, bear with me. You're not trying to catch soap in the bath, you are, Wyndham. What? What? Okay. Laurie. Go on. (laughs) Can you feel the love tonight? Can you feel the love tonight? Is this in a film or anything? Or is this just Elton John singing? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's in Lion King. It's in Lion King. I was just about to say Lion King then. That's not the answer. Oh. Can you feel the love tonight, Laurie? Can you feel the love tonight? Pinocchio? The answer is, that depends on how closely you press against me. Oh. James, last one in this. You'll yes. be oh so pleased to hear. <laughs> Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Um, Moulin Rouge. I only speak English these days. <laughs> I refuse to speak any. Well, that isn't right. It's, you're dang right, you'll coucher avec moi. <laughs> Laurie. <Yeah. laughs> Laurie. How much is that doggy in the window? Seven pounds ninety nine. Eight pounds. No, it's eight pounds. You can have that. Yes. Oh, right. you just gave him a point for nothing. No, because I got the right price. Oh. So we're still even. Stevens. You will be delighted to know you are still even, Stevens. It's all down to the final round. Where does Stevens right. come into? And who into knows this? what jeopardy there could be in that round? Oh. Right. Moving on to our second film, Laurie. I think this is one that you suggested. Absolutely, it was. It is Swamp oh. Thing. Let me tell you a little bit about Swamp Thing. It was released in 1982. It is a directed by Wes Craven, who, let's not forget, brought us Nightmare on Elm Street, People Under the Stairs, and Scream. Yes. So what the... F- 
Um, <laughs> it, was written, it was written by Wes Craven. Music by Harry Manfredini. Uh, the budget is an estimated three million with an unspecified box office. I don't think numbers go small enough. <laughs> um, however, it was nominated for a Saturn Award for Best Horror Movie. Wow. I don't know what the Saturn Awards are. Mm. But uh, sequels and spin offs um, Return of the Swamp Thing, it was a TV series between 1993, and then Netflix have recently done a 10 episode series which was cancelled. Oh, no! Oh, I haven't checked uh, it. Oh, no. Notable actors. Uh, there's really only one notable actor in this, and that is Ray Wise. Yay! Uh, but there's also Louis Jordan, uh, Adrian Barbeau, and Dick Durrock, which yeah. has to be one of the best names ever. Yeah, so Louis uh, Jordan, obviously, he's the punchy actor in this. He's the one that obviously costs the money. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Play a clip. <laughs> Government agents, scientists, soldiers, master criminals, secret formulas, monsters, and midgets. And what a clip. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell a lot about a film, the clips that get played. You can. You can Sorry. actually. I do need to flag. Actually, we were saying about the cast, uh, Ray Wise, but then Alice Cable, she's she's a biggie, so she plays uh, Adrian Bar. No, sorry, Adrienne Barbeau. She plays is the Alex actress. Yeah, Alice yeah, yeah. So she's in the Fog. She's K A B. Right. Okay. K A B Radio. She's, she's in better in the Fog. Oh, she well. And she's in Escape from New York. Everybody is better than anything. So this film is just Laurie. appalling. All right, James. Uh, do, let's. I'm going to flip. flip the switch. <laughs> James. One minute synopsis. Okay, so for, for reasons that are beyond me, um, <laughs> this woman goes into the swamp because they're doing some... Um, She's a scientist. Lab- yeah, some scientific experiments. Um, and uh, because there are villains in the piece, they inadvertently <laughs> create a swamp monster called Swamp Thing. And then they spend the rest of the film trying to get out of the swamp, getting back into the swamp, just hanging around the swamp. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, the more people drink the solution. It's just an abomination of a film. It shouldn't be allowed <laughs> ever to be ever seen again. Okay. Can I have a Rory. really quick go? I have a really quick go. Alex, go Alex Holland is basically he's a scientist, and he's, they're trying to uh, figure out a way where they can basically grow plants and food again. Very in a, politically relevant. in a desert. Yeah. In a desert, so he's drawing all these. So he's doing it in a swamp. Yeah, yeah, because it's very, it's very <laughs> rich. It's very rich in organics. Anyway, he's experimenting with his sister, this and the other, and he comes across the solution. Yes, I could do it. I just pile this green stuff on the floor and stuff grows. Amazing. The next minute, though, you find out Arcane, who's this malevolent bastard, wants that secret formula, and they all plough into the, 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 the laboratory they've got in the swamp, and Alex, our guy, as he tries to escape, he gets covered in this stuff, and he falls into the swamp, and he comes back as Swamp Thing, and... Yeah, just before he dies, he kind of falls in love with Abby, who is this person that visits the science place. And there's the high jinx of him trying to save her and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, lo- I'm not loath to ask. First impressions, Laurie. <laughs> uh, first memories. When did you first see it? First time I saw it was just now. Um, You'd never seen this? I'd never seen this. Uh, yeah, for yeah. some reason, I went into this thinking that you'd suggested it because no. it's one of your childhood I suggested it because it's my favourite superhero again because of Is Alan it? Moore it's again because of Alan Moore right. I read his stuff and I was like I love that's it it's Trump Batman it's Trump everything so that's why I said Swamp Thing um, but yeah my first impression is well this was made in 1982 right and yeah. as you're watching it it's kind of you get that is it 82? yeah yeah you get that feeling of the A team. Can, can I just say though, if mm-hmm. we're going to offer the year it was made as a reason and an excuse for what no, we no, get, no, 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 eighty two also gave us Blade Runner, E.T., yeah, yeah. the, the Dark Crystal, ah. the Thing, Poltergeist, and Rambo First Blood. Well, there <laughs> yeah. we go. Yeah. Right. So, so out of all of them, Rambo First Blood is kind of sort of vibing off more than anything. But yeah, it's, it's basically like an extended episode of kind of the A team with. Um, this is one more kind of do this action 80s That's action film, yeah, you that makes I mean? no sense. 
Like, yeah. Uh, whatsoever. So what... Um, it does make sense. It's, it's an Alan Moore character? No, no. So uh, uh, Swamp Thing was... Came out, I think, oh, could have been late 60s, What's maybe the 70s. What's the scope of the comics? Because the comic was he lives in a fucking swamp. He can't go anywhere. Well, the, the comics... And nobody else lives in a swamp. <laughs> um, Ever. The, yeah. original, the original comic was basically, it was a horror comic. So you had vampires, werewolves, stuff like that. And then Swamp Thing was against and trying to save them. Save, not the vampires, save people from those baddie people. Right. And they, he chilled out in the swamp. Then Alan Moore comes in, he does something much more interesting with the character, and it's much more about that Alec uh, Holland, who believes he is, something believes he is Alec Holland, but actually turns out he's just a plant. He's just a, you know, he's, he's, he's a vegetable that thinks he, what, he is Alex, but he's not. He's just a memory, he's, that's just a memory in him. And it's, it's an ethereal <laughs> kind of... Because he is a vegetable, because he is a vegetable, he's kind of connected to the earth. You know, it's a different kind of alien perspective that he has. So it's it's a very profound kind of pagan kind of. Okay, so nothing character. like the yeah, film. The like end up. Film yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Can I say something that I think encapsulates the whole film? Of course you can. Go on. Um, right. When she arrives um, at the start of the film, she arrives by. Um, Aqua plane, doesn't she? she? Yeah. Or something, or boat, or whatever. And then she gets in the boat <laughs> yeah. to get to this lab. Yeah. And, they, and she's wearing... And she's, it's deep in the mangrove. Yeah, thing. and she's completely inappropriately dressed. She is. She's wearing high heels. Yeah. Wearing, they're all wearing suits. Yeah. It's in ridiculous. A None swamp. of them are dressed appropriately. And then about half an hour into the film, the big bad turns up in the swamp, driving into the swamp in a car. Yes. Yeah. That sums up my entire <laughs> That's that, a good point. That, the whole thing is just a complete mess. It's a complete nonsense. It's an embarrassment of a film. Uh, I hated every second of did it. You, did, didn't you get to a point where it's so bad that you I, just go, eh. I didn't even get to that. I, 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 I resented this film. An embarrassment of a film, it actually did almost destroy Wes Craven's well, career. Because he I did The Last surprised. House on the Left, which did good reviews. And he did uh, The Hills Have Eyes, which was a massive horror fit, uh, hit. And then he, he he came to this. I think it was actually his fifth film, actually. So that yeah, it almost ruined his so career. I actually had a question here: Is this a director finding his feet? But no, he already had found his feet. Yeah, he'd done four films before. So why, actually, there was a why bit of a is this? He wrote this, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. script yeah. is unbelievably shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 I mean, the script's here: capture, escape, capture, escape, capture, escape. It. <laughs> There's it. a transformation. There is yeah. a transformation. A what do you think of the transformation? That, that, the transformation was like a sack on his head, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh well, both trans. I mean, the transformation from the man into the little guy. Well, he falls behind oh, the table, doesn't he? And you see his hand come up. From the table. Just because we should explain that. Why does so the the arcane the, the juice? Oh right, yeah. Transforms. Alex Holland or whatever his name is into Swamp into Thing, swamp thing yeah. who's bigger and stronger and better in every way other than the fact he can't leave the swamp for too long yeah however when Arcane steals it he doesn't want to try it on himself first so he deliberately gives it to his number one henchman who's a big guy and the juice turns him into a midget it's a midget why yeah. is that? <laughs> I know why but, well, but they, expl- they try and explain they it explain they explain it the heart it, um, it's, it it's accentuates the inner person yes uh, yes and yes. so the big bad dude who like beating people up inside he's a really small man yeah so yeah yeah it turned him into a small and man d- and they also they, when they take that transformation it also transforms the clothes because the clothes shrink to fit <laughs> so he had a little suit yeah. as a, mm-hmm. it's, it's yeah. awful 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 <laughs> Yeah, and that, like when they were hiding, I mean, she's the worst woman hiding in the swamp anyway. Yeah, but also wearing... there's no sense of urgency. They're just hanging around the swamp talking most of the time. Yeah. Wait for the next... that, that was the big attempting to offer a proper critique on this film is is yeah, difficult waste of time. because yeah. everything you normally like about a film is clunky. Yeah, that whole kind of all the cuts to to your point, James, about. To begin with, the only way they can get in is via plane and boat, yeah. and then he drives up. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a massive boat chase. Yeah, that is that full on eighteen. Cut to cut, is, they're not facing the same direction. They're not in the same <laughs> yeah. place. Yeah, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, as a nineteen early nineteen eighties film, as soon as it started, I absolutely knew there'd be a boob gratuitous shot. boob shots yeah. 
and there would be men imposing themselves on women. Yes. And it just, as soon as Alex Holland, he throws us the, they drop a beaker of this juice to begin with and it, uh, they go away and a little while later come back and there's a tree, mm-hmm. a tree's grown. And the only way you can celebrate success like that is forcibly kissing a woman. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake, stop yeah. it. Yeah. And then when we get to, um, Arcane has managed to steal the juice mm-hmm. and they're having a celebratory dinner party. Yeah. Which starts <laughs> with a whole load of naked dodgy fuckers oh right yeah sat around a room with a couple of women getting naked for no No, reason whatsoever yeah it's not even the people in that room who were there to celebrate but that was the brief kind of of the 1980s kind of action film not if you go back to the other films we're talking about but you can't get the time of it it's the low budget nature of it was like how are we going to get people to watch this Yeah. Yeah. did you hear the trailer um, I, ha- I looked at the trailer and the trailer is literally this is a paraphrasing but it's literally monsters explosions uh-huh. midgets <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> I've got here as well and so, I can't yeah. really remember who this is now but for the performances just when you thought the performances couldn't get any worse the chief scientist appears I can't remember the who English that was guy. yeah oh yeah what terrible English accent yeah. and then I've put and then they trump that with that kid, Jude. Which, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So there's kind of a so train has a little bit of light relief with Jude, doesn't it? Yeah, she's trying to escape the swamp and she comes across a local store slash gas station. The owner of which isn't there, but his grandson, this little black kid with massive Deirdre Barlow glasses, hmm. is there to offer a bit of comedic relief. But it's not funny. He's giving yeah. these little one-liners... So this woman turns up, she's on the phone, she's trying to get her people to come and pick her up, not realising that Arcane has set all of this up. Mm. And this little kid is just, she goes, is, can I use your phone? And points her inside. And as she walks inside, he just says, she looks like trouble. Or something ridiculous. And it's just super shit. Super yeah. Shit. I've got, um, I'm not on Wizard Hood, but I've, I've got very little else to say. It's, I've got a couple of bits. Go on. So I've got uh, lots of notes actually. Albeit that it did almost destroy Wes's career, it also actually was the birth of his career. Career, Him career. realizing this isn't good enough. On on set, he had he got the idea of Freddie because he was obviously prosthetics that the the, the so actor th- that was all going through and all that stuff. First transformation wasn't that bad. What first one? Well, you don't see him see turn it. into you see him jump into the water, and that's it. And then the next minute, he's a completely oh, different actor. Got, so the second when um, Arcane transforms, that's super shit. But I had one yeah. I had a note saying the first one was all right. Oh, well, I don't yeah. know. Don't that know. maybe that was in your mind. That's probably it took the edge off the transformation quality. But yeah, so this was uh, this was the inspiration of Freddy on set here, and the shoot itself was. Apparently, really, really awful for I everyone involved imagine. because I mean, it was a really hot summer. Place to, it well, was, to film in a swamp for a start, can't yeah, be nice. But it was a really hot summer, and there's these things called black caterpillars, whatever, and they sort of bore into your skin and stuff. And there was a plague of black cap- caterpillars all the way through the uh, shoot, that, which might so, explain the lack of commitment from the actor. Kind of <laughs> they, <laughs> it yeah. really wasn't fun. But it is, it is just that whole kind of A-team airwolf magnum, but not even But really they had storylines. I mean, you can't, it's just, I know what you mean by the style, it felt like that. But it was just, it was just. There is a very brief, awful. brief moment, though, where you get just kind of, because the tone of this film is all over the shop. Sometimes it's taking itself seriously. Yeah, you don't know it's, it's comedy or it's a horror or It's messy or what? as hell, but there's this scene where we're in Arcane's, Layer, as it were. Layer. There you go again. Layer. 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 Not a word. It's a sound, isn't it? Layer. Layer. Right. Okay. They're in arcane layer, and um, <laughs> uh, they're kind of like running through some sort of tunnels and stuff like that. And it seems like a horror because now arcane is kind of like this werewolf thing, swamp thing is swamp thing, and then he's got his girl with him or whatever. And it feels like, oh, cool. Now this is kind of a horror film now, you know, like a monster film. But it only happens for probably about one and a half minutes. And Wes was really upset because obviously they had to cut the film to shit. And he said the only really redeeming scenes in it they cut out and it was a chase through these water tunnels, which obviously I think is just after that scene where you see him running through all these kind of sort of tombs and stuff. But they cut it out. But that, just that one little bit, it felt like what it could have been. 
and it just fucking wasn't. I've got we've got here any plot holes, and I just put it's difficult to have holes without a plot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's just, some of the things are just literally. Oh, how the how the fuck do I get from point A to point B? Mm. They finally capture um, Swamp Thing and put him in a dungeon. Yeah, the big baddie turns into a, a little baddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Comes in and Arcane is interrogating him, a Swamp Thing, saying, "How come you've become really strong and he's become really small?" And under no torture whatsoever, Swamp Thing tells them. Arcane leaves, and then they go, "Oh, how are we gonna? Oh, how are we gonna get out?" And then the little midget guy, he says, "Oh, there's a button up there, just in case a guard gets locked in." Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awful. And it, there's also a scene I can't remember this either, but. I put a memorable scene. The scene where the, uh, the big bad villain is topless for no reason whatsoever. I think he's just wandering around topless. Yeah, and the, reason... yeah the, the whole the boob shots, the topless bits. Apparently it's the European market. They, de- they demand for you to have a cut to well, be the shown Europeans... in Europe. <laughs> That makes me please that we need some, Yeah, Europe. they need some titties If, if and that's shit. what they want, they can have it. Yeah. I mean, it the, is... It, go on. The the, the 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 stunt guy, a guy called Anthony Sidri, whatever it is, he played Alex when he's on fire and he runs into the swamp. swamp. So his full full body is on fire. He's the same stunt man who does Freddy full body on fire. Right. There is, is, is his niche fire? It sounds that way. Very good. I, t- I mean, I think we can agree this isn't worth watching. Yeah. Can we agree? Well, we'll get yeah, to that. With God, yeah. I've heard that. Does it stand up today? No. Okay. It depends if you're into that kind of oh, sort no, of, awful. you know, cult wasting your junk. Life. Yeah, yeah. Memorable, memorable you know, lines. Because uh, um, there are loads. I've got one. Say hello to your boyfriend, reason. baby. I mean, look at your own body, and you'll see a million messy miracles. <laughs> 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 I've got one here where. Uh, They've been running around the swamp and they haven't been able to catch Swamp Thing because all the men are complete fucking idiots. Yeah. Uh, and Arcane says, he's like a brilliant chess player. <laughs> <laughs> what? He, 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 de- he apparently famously he kept writing his own dialogue. And this is another example. He got example. involved. A strong adversary <laughs> is, a da- is like a dangerous, beautiful woman. I've never been able to resist either. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only other one I've got uh, at the end, I think they say, he'll be back though. No. <laughs> he won't be back. <laughs> he won't. That's so, and the, the, so you've got the big henchman who gets turned into a midget, and then you've got the, the really shit other henchman who's a little bit like the guy in Commando, like a shit version of... Uh, yeah. That guy, but it, it's just, and he's another one who force kisses people and then gets pushed off a boat. Yeah. It's like you are just yeah, remarkable horrible, idiots. Horrible, horrible. Mm-hmm. Can't fucking shoot straight. It's they the classic to... '80s bullet sprayed yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 And stop they about did try to put film. Ray <laughs> in the suit, so Ray Wise, because obviously he had slightly more acting chops than oh, what's his name, Paddy, whatever. What the, the guy who was in the suit? Yeah, uh, the, the guy who went on to play Leland Palmer. Well, Leland Palmer, yeah. So Dick he's Durick. Alex before he turns into right. Swamp Thing, which yeah. is Dick Durick. Yeah. So, but they tried to put Ray in the suit, so they did a lot of shots with Ray, but because um, it just didn't work. Right. There's a surprise. Right. Okay, so I actually think um, Ray Wise got lucky. He's only in it for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. Then he went off and he was yeah. all right. Okay. Any last comments or thoughts before we score? No. no. Okay. So, performances, three. One. Well, James, we go the other way round. Oh, sorry. You know- <laughs> Can I say, this is much, I get it from this seat. What do you mean? I get how it works from this seat. <laughs> I've been very quiet about this up to now, but when I'm sat where you are now, Laurie, I, yeah. I get confused about the whole process. <laughs> yeah, this is There's something about this seat clarifies it all for me. Yeah. So, uh, performance is three, Laurie. Three. One. James, one. Effects, Laurie. Um, three. James. Zero. I went for three. Plot. Jen. Two. One. Two. Rewatch factor, zero. Uh, yeah, honestly, one. Zero. Direction, Laurie. Uh, three. One. Two. Cinematography, James. One. Three. Two. Sound and music, three. Uh, two. Two. Originality, Laurie. Uh, where's bless his heart? He tried to. One. Oh, I scored this 
I may, may have mistyped that. High school is eight. Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to leave it in because it yeah. makes fuck all different. Uh, enjoyability. One. Two. Three. Three. Um, because the Life European, changing the past present. Slipped. Zero. Zero. Laurie? Uh, zero. Okay. So I have a score of 25. Wow. I've got a score of nine. <laughs> I've got a fair idea where this is going to sit on our leaderboard. Uh, uh, 21. Oh, That's, That's got to be an all-time low, isn't it? 55 total. Oh, my pen's run out. That's obviously fourth place on uh, this year's leaderboard. Gives it a, an actually higher than I was expecting, 18.3. That's because you scored it so high for that. Originality. Thing. I Originality. think that must have been a typo. But right. I'm assuming that ends up last. No, it 18.3 just puts it just above Return of the Living Dead Part 2. <laughs> and to be honest, I think that's a I much think that's more co- far superior film. It puts it above. Yeah, yeah. It put, by, by, battle Beyond the Stars, though. It was missing wow. my scores, though, Return of the Living Dead 2. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. It doesn't work like that. Okay, so. <laughs> you tire me. We, um, you'll be pleased to know there's one more round of the quiz. <laughs> Fuck. Look at that. It's got to be. The scores are... It's all to play for. The scores are seven apiece. Right. Three questions. Okay. Right. Come on. Crash Open through the windows. It. It's Oscar season. Yes. Right? Mm. So, James. Yeah. What is the greatest number of Oscars won by a single film? And Closest. I'd just like to say... Twelve. Did... Ooh. Close. 19. No cigar. What? 11. Uh, so I get a point for that. You don't, because you said 12. <laughs> uh, and that was Ben Hur, Titanic, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Damn it! Nice. Yeah, nice. Laurie, mm. who has won the most Oscars of all time? Ralph Macchio. So no, the, no, 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 no. These not, aren't no, no, trick no. questions. These are, for some reason, I got yeah. bored making them up. It's. Oh, what's her name? It's a her, right? Is she in Sophie's Choice? You can't, it's not, it's not how quizzes work. What's her name? Well, how can I forget her name? Right, time's up. Um, and you, no. It's not her. No. What was the question? Who has won the most Oscars of all time? Okay, I, I'm going to go for Jack Nicholson. Oh, it's Walt Disney. Oh, no, of, course of course it was. 26. Damn it. Okay. Why can I think of her name? <laughs> so, this is a joint hand. round. You each get a chance to answer. All right. Backwards and forwards. Okay. Only six horror films... Have ever been nominated for Best Picture? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you name them? First one, Jack. The Shining. No. Psycho. No. Uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yes. The Birds. No. Fuck. Uh, Clockwork Orange. No. No way. One more go each. The Shining. He just said the Shining. <laughs> oh balls! <laughs> um. And I, I'm going to go for The Exorcist. The Exorcist is one. Yeah! The, the six classified are The Exorcist, Jaws, Silence oh. of the Lambs, Get Out, Black Swan, Sixth Sense. Okay, I would say oh, Black wow. Swan is not a horror film, but oh, there we go. Okay, final oh, round. It kind of is. Final yeah. round. Jaws, yeah. Is. Yeah. Uh, James, this is a solo question. Which was the first DC movie tie in to the to the episode? Yeah, well done. Uh, which was the first DC movie to win an Oscar? Um, I am going to say Superman. Yeah! Yay! Do you know which Oscar it won? Yeah, it'll be for whether a man can fly or not. Special Achievement Award, yeah. pretty much. Ah, yep. <laughs> look at me, look at me. <laughs> Laurie, last question for you. Yeah. Excluding this year's Joker, yeah, which was the last DC movie to win an Oscar. Um, oh, this is so easy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> spell. Um, is it one of the Nolan ones? So uh, Dark Knight Rises. It's not. It was Suicide Squad. Oh, oh wow! For, for, for a costume, or makeup, something. and hairstyle. Yeah, right, 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 which right, you right. will be super pleased to know brings us to the end of the quiz. Wow! I have to idiot. Uh... I think you've won. I know. Definitely okay. won. With a winning margin of three, ten plays seven. James, you are the winner. Well, well done. Faster. That means you've got to do the light for the next week. 
I always do the freaking <laughs> like what? Oh yeah. Okay, we've been here for ages. Oh, Time to choose Lord. next week's subject. The ball rummager is Laurie. All right, let's go. <sighs> There's well, at least no. we'll be able to choose a film quickly. It's not his choice. Exactly. That's Rhubarb and Custards. Yeah. 20. 20? 2 0. Okay. 20. Uh, 20 is a year. It is a year 2000. Let's all meet Damn it. it. <laughs> okay, we're going to choose some films and come back. <laughs> Okay, uh, James, do you want to give your first offering? Yes, my first offering for 2000 is going to be Battle Royale. Oh, great. Ooh. Oh, wow, 2000, brilliant. Okay. Okay, uh, my yeah. first offering oh, yeah. is going to be Pitch Black. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. Go on, say that again. That is Vin Diesel before he oh, became yes, Vin yes, Diesel. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. My second film is going to be Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio <laughs> in The Beach. All right, OK. Oh. It, <laughs> it, twist, exciting, it twists right? my dick, that film. Uh, and my don't second... Want any film where it twists twist Laurie's dick. dick. <laughs> my, my second film is Hollow Man. Oh, right, OK. Uh, bacon. Bacon. We were speaking of earlier. Yeah. A bit of bacon. What was the first one again, you chose? Pitch Black. Pitch Black. Okay, my lovelies. So, Battle Royale is definitely in there. Chunk in. So now, Pitch Black, The Beach, and Hollow Man. So, Battle Royale is that. Da 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 is that. We're, we're really just, just, just putting... Yeah, come on. <laughs> Should I just do it? Yeah. Oh, no, that's going to wind me up, though, isn't it, that one? So, Hollow Man or the Beach. No, Hollow Man or Pitch Black. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Fuck off. Come on! Sorry, kids. Uh, the Beach. Oh, <laughs> double whammy wheel done. Uh, I've never seen The Beach, so... Oh, have you not? On that note. So, just one final piece of poetry to sign oh. off the episode. Are you ready? Do you want some background music? No. Just before you do this, can I just say what a wonderful job you've done? <laughs> oh, yeah, well done. We've now been here yeah, three yeah, hours yeah, and yeah. feel like killing ourselves. That's so, just before we go, mm. the devil's in my jockstrap. Let me make clear what I mean by that line. It's not that we share. He has his. I have mine. It's more that his raison d'etre abounds, pinching away between my muscly ass mounds, causing discomfort down there when I run. The devil makes my jockstrap yank hairs from my bum. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, like that? I did. Oh, with well that, done, ladies and gentlemen, that is this episode done. Next time, James will be back in the chair. Signing out. Signing ladies, out. everybody. I've been James Wilden. Lots of love. I've been Laurie. I've been James Wilden. Ah. Oh. Lighthouse. I'm vomiting onto my fish tank yesterday. <laughs> Deliberately? Oh, no, I wasn't planning on doing it. I'm, um, James said we had loads of drinks. I was feeling queasy all three in the morning. Um, or when we woke up, from when I woke up. And um, yeah, just went to clean my fish tank. <laughs> Not in it, though. No, thankfully. Well, they'd have eaten for a month. Oh, when yeah. I learnt to dive, yeah. I was oh. really badly sick. In your diving capsule. Through the dive mask. Okay. So you, it's got two ports that bent out, so you can just be sick and it just kind of goes, uh, 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 comes out. Are people but, often sick when they yeah. dive? Stupid. In, in bad yeah. weather. But, so you, you kind of... You're underwater. Yeah. What does the weather well, so But you're do, still doing this underwater as the waves move by. You're being moved up and down slightly. Oh, is that true? Uh, uh, below about three metres, you're all right, but on the way down. It's, oh. And as I was kind of... <laughs> it's all coming out. And like a million fish just go... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that's Love it. horrible. And it was like... Oh, claustrophobic and... Yeah, 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 get up, get up, quick, 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 quick. Had to stay down. It was a qualification dive. So I had to stay down for half an hour. With the vomit? Well, oh, no, the fish ate that quite quickly. God, that's disgusting.